Let's see how he can get our day started. Yeah, such a kind of an important moment for him here in his his crank work slope style career. You know, he's, he's he, it's up to him right now. How deep is his foundation going to be All for the right. rest of his career? Anton Linder on course. There's that big drop. Nice unturned down. 360 off. Big backflip can can. Okay, so he's looking smooth right now. Just getting that first run in. Big truck down. Looks like he got blown off track a little bit, but he's staying online. Flip whip on the hip. Getting that triple, two, triple truck 270. Opposite spin. Now he's spinning his opposite rotation in. Regular rotation out. Takes some pedals. Oh, come on. Goes for the three double whip. Just not enough speed there. His arms, when you're doing those double tail whips, your arms are whipping the bike around. That's why we call it a tail whip. And when your arms get in front of that rotation, your circles then run into each other and it absolutely stops the rotation of the bike. And it looked like he was kind of trying to suck up the lip to get over the landing, like maybe he didn't have enough speed and he just kind of lost that rhythm. I mean, it was great to see him looking so on point early on in this run. Everything except for the final feature was flawless. We were wondering how they were going to be riding as the wind continues to build, but this was a good sign of things to come here. Yeah, that flip tuck to Can Can at the top was so huge and so clean, as well as this triple truck 270 on the hip that he pulled off. And then this is where things started slowing down a little bit. He was really nice up, up in. This is an opposite spin, so he's spinning on his opposite rotation. Have you ever tried to brush your teeth with your opposite hand? That's not easy. Imagine trying to, get to spin the other way. So I want to see his landing out of the whale tail here because I think he lost a bit of speed. And you're right, he was pushing for that last jump. I think that's... Yeah, I think it all started right there. He landed a little bit low, so he has a little bit less momentum than he needed off of this step down with the truck can can down the step down. Let's see where he lands. A little bit heavy and long there. A little bit over rotated, losing a bit of speed, trying to s squeeze some in. But see, he pushes, trying to get the distance. That now, threw off his timing for this trip. Now watch his it? arms making the circles. It looked good there. And then, yeah, he just lost. It looked like the bike caught up and his arms were not making the circle that his bike was rotating in. And those just sort of stopped the momentum when that happens. It's like he was mixing the dough. The dough got too sticky. He knows exactly what he needs to do to get back up there and stomp it in the second run. Of course, this is a best of two run format. Each rider gets two stabs at this Thule Slope Style Innsbruck course. I'd say, you know, that's a great first run on a Crankworx career right there. We're definitely going to be rooting for him to stomp that three double whip and run number two. Yeah, something you can build confidence on, making it to the bottom, you know, kind of fighting some adversity when he when he over-rotated that one. But yeah, really, really good first showing. Let's hope, you know, he's got something to build on from that, and let's hope he can clean it up for that second run. So there we go, Miguel Guerrero. This is his fourth Crankworks appearance. He was ninth in New Zealand to start the season. Let's see if he can improve upon that. Big truck driver in. Let's see what he's got on this huge jump. Flip, bar spin, two tail whip. Absolutely perfection, straight to pedals. Flip whip down this step down. That's totally blind off that lip. Then he does a 450 tail whip to bar spin. Oh, oh he has a little case there, so he's gonna suck this up. Forgo the trick. He's just trying to get through at this point. Oh, and then his tire blows. Really good upper section for Miguel Guerrero. He's feeling the vibe out here in Innsbruck. Yeah, the height and the amplitude on that first double that he had was something to talk about. You know, these riders, these tricks, you know, you can earn a certain amount of points on the tricks, but, you know, you can earn more points. It's, it, there's a little bit of overall impression involved in this. The higher you go, the more extension you get, the more dialed your landing is, how smooth and easy it looks to get through the sections. That's all going to help get you a better score. And that's what he did on this first double to start off. Oh, here's where we're going to see the over-rotation encased a little bit there. And then you see, actually, right as he went off that lip. Let's see if it blew before or if it blew right here. No, it, it had blown right off of the lip, actually. Oh. He was lucky to make it over. Yeah. All right, well, first two riders drop. We still haven't seen a complete run. Anton Linder with issues on the final jump. Miguel Guerrero with a blown out tire halfway down. Yeah, he landed on the knuckle of that 
that hip up there and just probably pinched his tube. And he was pretty lucky right as he was going off that lip, that pinch came out and that's when it blew up. So you talked at the beginning of the show about who you were saying is your wild card pick for a podium, for their first podium. I want to, oh, look at this. We got Nikolai up at the top. This is going to be fun to check in periodically. How's it going, Nikolai? It's going well, guys. I'm here with Tom. Nice that Tom, you, Tom, you've been pushing it hard this week with a lot of moves. You had your first podium in Roto. How are you feeling for your run coming up in a bit? I'm surprisingly comfortable today. I'm not too stressing. So, yeah, I'm just going to try and do what I've been doing in practice and get to the bottom of the hill. Amazing to hear, bro. Um, first run, depending on how it goes, you have more for a second one or...? Yeah, I'm going to do a bit of a semi-chiller for the first run, and then I'll step it up the second one if I need to. Semi-chiller for Tom, I said. You're going to find out that's not so semi-chiller. Get it, bro. Good luck. For sure. Thanks, Nikolai. I mean, Tom, I said it was a big moment when he cracked onto the podium for the first time because he'd been wanting it for years. He did that to start this season in Rotorua. And we're talking about guys who haven't gotten on the podium yet. You said... Uh, Paul Coudere is your pick for a first podium out here. I'm going to say Hooper. He's had a couple fifths, three of them to be exact. And I think that today is going to be his day to, to hop on there. And uh, we're going to see whose prediction pans out. It looks like next rider we're going to have dropping right now is going to be a late addition coming into the competition today from the alternate list. This is going to be Felix Tornqvist. We saw him on his first Crankworx appearance to start this season in Rotorua. He finished 12th. He was hanging out here practicing, waiting for that call. He got it after we had injuries early this morning. It's always an interesting scenario to find yourself in. Yeah, definitely. I remember that run from Rotorua. He had trouble on the last set, but up until that point, he was a top 10, top 5 contender. So he has what it takes here in Innsbruck today. Let's see how he can deal with the pressure that is. Getting thrown in the last minute. Nice tech trick to start it off. Oh, that's okay. burly in the wind. Yeah, big tail whip drop in. Oh, Whoa, is that a quadruple yeah. backflip? Bar spin. We talked about how big that jump is using all that time. 360 down the step down. Double downside tail whip on the hip. Oh, that's a huge opportunity for him right here. Nice cork down through. You see him hanging up a little bit, so maybe he's fighting the wind to get through. Tail whip up. 360 X up down. Come on, get this last set. Let's get All a right, top to bottom in. There Clean it is. backflip bar spin to finish things off. That is the right move right there on a day where the first two riders do not put down a top to bottom run. Felix Tornqvist in his second Crankworx slope style appearance making some veteran decisions. Yeah, about an hour and a half ago, Felix was not going to be competing in this event, and now he's in first place. <laughs> exactly right. We don't even have to wait for the scores to know that. Yeah, smart move there. Getting getting the top to bottom. Let's see what the weather's gonna do. Let's get a score in. Let's feel comfortable on the bikes. Now let's count these bar spins. One, <laughs> two, three. And does he do a fourth one? He, yeah, does. he does. A fourth one, absolutely. It's and ridiculous. Ca catching in between every one of those, that takes time. It's almost like, I mean, each bar spin gets exponentially harder because you're getting that much closer to the ground. So the judges have to be going, well, I mean, a double scores more than a single, but a triple scores more than that gap from a single to a double. And a quadruple, they're like, all right, all right, let's, let's rain some numbers on this score sheet. Yeah, unbelievable combo and a testament to the size of these jumps out here. We were talking about it earlier, watching these riders go down the track. You know, it looks a little sketchy on the bikes, like, because the speeds are so high and they're in there for so long. It's just amazing the evolution of the sport and how big these jumps are. I mean, Simon Godziak out here practicing just to get the flow of the course on a downhill bike. He said it flows even better. It's more fun to ride on the downhill bike. That tells you the jumps are big enough. Yeah, absolutely. I was just as surprised as you were to hear that. Nice big floater there down, halfway down the landing. So there we go, the score, obviously, putting him in the hot seat right now. It's a 64.75. Nine more riders to go here. Run number one of the Thule Slope Style Innsbruck. We see an extra guest there in the finish corral. That's the Triple Crown Trophy here on location only when the Triple Crown can be won, which it can be won here today for a record third time in a row. What a, yeah, what a crazy scenario. We heard Emil talking about that at the beginning, going, oh, it's going to be challenging with this win. But we've seen a top-to-bottom run here, so we know 
The conditions are good enough. It's going to be a battle to see who can triumph over adversity. So Lucas Hooper, this is my pick for a guy I think has what it takes to get on the podium here today. Last season, Joyride and here in Innsbruck, he had fifth place. He started the season in Roto with another fifth place. So he's cozy in that top five spot right now and very, very capable of surpassing it. Yeah, Lucas Hooper on course. Definitely capable. Nice bar spin to warm it up. Gets that 360 yeah. tail whip off oh. the drop in. Big front flip, triple, triple bar spin. Okay, that's a completely blind trick, throwing the bars. Perfect landing, oh, flip whip down the step down, nosing it in. He's gonna have good speed. Yes. Downside, oh. flip whip, gets a tail up in. At this point, we're getting tricks off. We're battling all of the elements, truck up. Oh, cork seven down, this is an Amazing run, double come back flip, come on, pull it yes. down, yes! Oh, Lucas Hooper going for the jugular on the final trick booter. Pulled the double backflip out, what a run! Man, he had to improvise in the middle, I'm so glad he stuck with it. Crazy moments that we'll be reviewing in slow motion shortly. What a hammer on the last jump. Yeah, we didn't see Lucas in cans because he had separated his shoulder. Third degree separation of his shoulder. This is his first event back. And man, what a way to come back. Yes. All right, I feel pretty good about my prediction right now. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll see. That was a good, good thing. He's young though, count them, Alan. One. Two. Count them with us. Are you counting with us in the chat and here? Three bars. What makes this such a technical trick is when you're coming around frontwards, you cannot see the landing. You're staring at your belly and your knees, and it's all by feel. And then oh. this flip whip right here, this set him up for the rest of the run, nosing it in, getting pumped. We saw riders having trouble with speed. Oh, my gosh. Lucas Hooper did not have trouble with speed it, because of the landing on that I step down. I love that trick so much. It's kicking an opposite tail up, and he's leaning downside. He catches up with the bike. And you know what? He landed a little bit sideways after that, so he had to salvage and just go, all right, I'm just going to go for a straight tail. I'm so glad he did, because that's what it's going to take today. The riders who may have a mistake, but they push through it, and they keep going and maybe just reach into their back pocket for a trick they weren't planning on to keep the run rolling. Yeah, it gets that 360 bar spin, that truck driver up into the whale tail, and then this coming out of the whale tail, this cork seven. Oopy. Right here, just winds it up. You see his eyes twisting all the way around, spots the landing, lets his body catch up to a perfect landing. And this backflip, I got nervous as this was a very slow rotation, looking so casual, knowing exactly where he is the entire time coming into the landing. Couldn't have been done any better. So good. Rob is standing by with Hoopy. Rob? Here we are. Yeah, Hoopy, what a run. You've got to be happy with that incredible, mate. For sure, for sure. Well, destroyed my shoulders four weeks, weeks ago. It's a relief. <laughs> I know I got it. I'm thankful for everyone which helped me to get there. And yeah, second run. I got to clear it up. I want to have some hard metal today. <laughs> Here we are. We're going to see your score any minute now, mate. Big double flip to finish. Was it insane to see? I'm pretty sure you're going to be taking the lead with that. Let's have a look. Solid. Yeah. There Second you go. run. All right. There you go. Back to you guys. New leader. Yes. You guys. Oh, I'm here with Anton Linder, bro. You were so on it in that first run. Honestly, really impressive riding all the way down. Tell us what happened on that three double whip. Thank you. Yeah, I think I just was a bit tired in my arms and stuff. I threw the whip and then it just came around a bit slower than I thought. So it just like I messed it up a bit and hit my foot in the tire and <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. But we'll see what I will do about it in the next run. Maybe another one or do something a bit more chill. We see. Awesome, bro. Well, whatever you decide to do, you got it. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good stuff, Nikolai. Yeah, what a crazy change in energy from when, you know, Anton Linder started the event without finishing his run to now we're really cranking things up. Hoopy coming back from that AC separation just four weeks ago, stomping that run. I believe the score to beat is an 85. Yeah, it is. And we're looking at Torquato Testa, the Italian, at the top of the course. Next rider to drop in. This guy's been on tour for a long time. He has done a lot. He was fifth at the last stop in Cairns, Australia. Best result was a second in New Zealand, 2017. But he loves it here. His last podium was a third here in Innsbruck in 2021. And we just rattled off a bunch of results dating back 
a lot of years, so he knows the benefits of just waiting for that flag to mellow out before you drop in for your run. Yeah, this course is so long. We got a couple of wind socks on on course. You almost kind of have to look ahead, you know, look at what the wind sock down course is doing. Sometimes it might be windy as you're dropping in and you're kind of questioning it, but you look down and the wind sock is still. So it's kind of like a little bit of game of luck. You know, you can kind of time it like, okay, it's not windy down there right now. I'm going to go. By the time I'm there, I hope it's not windy. So having that in the back of your head while having to do these tricks on these insanely big jumps going as fast as these riders are going, you know, it's, it's a big, big mental battle out there. For the ultimate slope style super fans who remember last year's winning run vividly, you'll have a picture in your mind of Emil Johansson taking his time, waiting for the conditions to improve. He won it on his first run last year, stomped it clean because of the patience he was able to. Yeah, here we go. We're taking a look at the wind. If we wanted to quantify it in speed right here, 16 kilometers per hour, 10 miles per hour, kind of a rule of thumb. We, all, we always talk about this at Rampage as well. In terms of miles per hour, as soon as it gets into double digits, you know, the gusts can be even more than that. But that's where it starts to really affect you. If you're looking at eight, you're like, that's going to be less than ideal, but we can, we can figure it out. So Nikolai knows all too well what it's like to be at the top of this course, don't you, Nikolai? Yeah, I'm up here at the top, and the conditions up here are getting a little breezy, unfortunately. There's that Red Bull windsock that we can see right from the start. And uh, if that one's moving, you're kind of nervous to drop because you don't want to start your run with a windy thing. So uh, that's why Torquey's waiting. He's being smart. I'm here with Griff. He's up in a few riders. How are you feeling, Griff? I'm feeling good, you know, always a little nervous before the first run, but yeah, really hoping that the wind calms down a little bit on us and we can get this contest done dialed. Awesome to hear, bro. Yeah, if you're a mountain biker and you love catching air, you have your favorite weather app on your phone and you learn how much you can trust it. Looking at those hourly wind forecasts. Right now it's forecasting about five, but we're seeing 10, so that's the real deal. It's like, all right, you can have your forecast, but do you trust it? Yeah, we're, we're uh, down here in the booth, which is towards the bottom of the course, just, just to the rider's right of the last jump. We're quite a bit lower, and it's, it's getting gusty even down here, so you gotta imagine up there, it's, they're feeling it a bit more. So, hanging out at home, we thank you for joining us. We wouldn't miss it. I mean, I did the same thing as you. Last stop, I was home on the couch watching the show from the comfort of my own home. And uh, if you're doing that right now, make sure you hang out with us, have, have a chat. We sometimes, <laughs> we sometimes take requests. Oh, here we go, Torquato on course. He saw a window in the wind and he got confident. He's looking good so far. Truck to X up in. Oh, can no can backflip to tail it. He didn't even touch the frame. Did that rotation completely with his arms. Big cork seven on the step down. And then an opposite, opposite cork seven on the hip. It's actually a cork 810 technically. Gets the double tail whip off. Double truck up. Flip Superman or was that flip no foot can? No I couldn't can, tell. Yeah. And then finishing it off with a cast roll. There we go. Two in a row, top to bottom, stomps. Great run there for Torquato Testa. The big question now, was it enough to knock Lucas Hooper out of that top spot? Lucas has that score to beat. It's an 85. Yeah, favorite part about that run right there for me is this is what he did to get that fifth at the last stop in Australia, is mixing that regular cork seven right into that opposite cork seven. I love the way it's applied to this course there because you have one on a step down and one on a hip. So tech. Yeah, so tech. And speaking of tech, on the big first double, no Jeez. foot can backflip to tail whip. Big cork seven there, that's the regular rotation. And then there on the hip, which would be a harder way to do an 8-10 opposite, fully corked out. Getting the double tail up around. Neither of those sevens is a shoe-in, you know? A regular cork seven on a step down is a heavy hammer. And then having to over-rotate your opposite is ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely, good call. And something about doing them back to back, it just puts mm -hmm. that context to it. 
makes it that much harder. If there's any question that the judges are going to notice it, throw them right back to back on the course and the judges are like, okay, I get what you're doing here. And it was, it was a no-footed can-can backflip on the step down. Landing hard, but able to get back on the pedals and have enough speed to get this cash roll off. So much style on that cash roll. That's reminiscent of the way that Janon does them. And Janon has my favorite cash rolls. Love the body position there. And it was perfectly clean the whole way through. Yeah. Unless I'm forgetting something, right? No, it was totally clean. You know, you talked earlier about how long he's been on tour. That veteran mentality totally paid off. He waited for the wind. He did exactly what he needed to do and, and had the perfect right opportunity. It's still calm. That's great to know. You know, wind tends to run in, in cycles and patterns. So if we can get gusty moments followed by lowly moments, this is going to be a great show. All right, well, score to beat an 85 held by Lucas Hooper. For Quato Testa, stomping a run full of hammers. Will it be enough? Comparing those runs, you know, some of the bangers for Hoopy. A front flip triple bar on the second feature, a double back flip on the last feature. Those are two heavy hammers. So we're going to see how the rig to opposite cork sevens. Capped off with a cash roll, we'll compare. Yeah, the only thing I could think about is Lucas Hooper, you know, he had that one little over rotation and had to re reroute himself and only got a single tail whip on the same jump that a double tail whip came in. So let's see what he got. Here it comes, score to beat is an 85 and 83.25 for Torquato Testa. Slots him into second place. Definitely a run to be happy stoked. about. Sometimes you know if a rider's bummed on their score. He looks stoked. And he knows he has a second opportunity as well. Here you go. Here's your guy, Alan. Yeah, here's my guy. This is the guy the you tiger. say is ready to get his first podium here. His name is Paul Coudere out of France. His best crankwork slope style result is a fourth. It was right here in Innsbruck in 2019. Here we go. Paul Coudere on course. Yeah. Backflip <laughs> bar spin on the drop in. Not taking any time. Straight into a double backflip on that massive first double. Here we go on the step down, bar spin, bar spin, backflip into the hip section. So this is an 8-10 regular spin. And an opposite <laughs> cork seven, okay. No! Oh, he gets a flat tire. Oh, gosh. Oh, man, at least he got up there. <laughs> <laughs> no! I mean, yes, I'm happy he made it up there. But the tire blown out, that run was so good. Get your head back in the game, man. You were on it. Oh, he's got to do all of that over. Now you know what I saw. It's, that was an amazing, amazing top section. I mean, I did not doubt you. I just needed to come up with a plan that's potentially going to beat you. But man, trust me, I'm rooting for Paul Couder. And I'm so bummed to see that tire blow out. I just picture like a kid building a beautiful sandcastle and then a bully coming over and smashing it and the kid goes, I gotta build all that I built and then some to finish this castle. He's gotta start from scratch and run number two. Or even worse, you you have kids, you've built sandcastles. When you're building the sandcastle and all of a sudden it comes apart for no reason. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't see a reason why. No, it's not like his sand wasn't wet enough. He didn't do anything wrong. Maybe a little bit of an over rotate. We're gonna see in the replays, but come on. Gosh, can we not come up with a permanent solution to slope style bikes, tires blown out? I am sick of this. There are so many factors. I'm writing my senator on pissed. So many factors at play. Oh, man. Uh, at least he picked a good window. You know, we got Gus right now for these replays. All right, let's. Oh, Nikolai, what are you seeing here on this run? I'm sure you were jumping oh, okay. up and down. Paul was going ham in this run. Double flip after the flip bar, which is one of the most difficult flat drop tricks. Now let's look at this. Back flip, bar spin, bar spin. Then he goes one way with the 720, straight seven, that's way more rare than a cork or a cash. And then opposite seven, he corks that one. And then look, he lands flat, he blows his tire, and the commitment level is so high that he still goes for it. No doubt he feels, look, completely flat. Bam! Oh. Tire goes and he pedals after the tire <laughs> blows, trying to continue the run. These riders are 100% committed to finish these runs, and that shows right there. Oh, for sure. In his head, he's already at the final jump, you know? He's gone over the plan so many times in his head. In his head, he probably planned on landing at the top of that landing and perfectly square with the angle of it, but oh, there you have it.
Yeah, that's that pinch flat situation. Look Mind you, the, the wheels are on the furthest outside of all of their rotations. So the lighter oh. the tires, the lighter the tubes. Yeah, he just barely made I mean, it up there. I mean, he landed with his left foot on his frame. That almost caused him to roll backwards. He almost ended up taking a ride with his bike there, which in that scenario, we would have been thinking, OK, his ankle is going to be capable of run number two. Luckily, all he's got to do is throw a tube in that beast and rinse and repeat. It reminds me of a, a scene in the movie Rad when they had to go up the cliffhanger. You're either in or you're out. He's all in. My boy Paul Kuder here was almost like Hollywood Mike Miranda. He was almost out. <laughs> he was almost out, but he's all in for run number two. Oh, OK. All right. I guess we better move on. So Griffin Paulson up there always carrying the energy. This guy is solidifying himself as a staple on the tour. He knows what's up. Let's see how he sets up his bike in this Max's tire check. Yo, what's up, guys? I'm Griffin Paulson. I'm here to do my Max's tire check. I'm here riding the slope style at Kikeworks Innsbruck. So I'm running the Maxxis Icon front and back. I like to keep the tread and the profile symmetrical. I'm running the 2.2 .2 profile size. I just think it's the perfect blend of kind of a narrow tire to flick around these tricks, but also have some stability underneath you. For these slope style rigs, I'm running this thing maxed out. Front and back are both 60 PSI, pretty much rock hard. Helps it keep on the rim. You know, we're not getting any pinch flats or anything like that then, and helps it roll extra fast and uh, get some extra air time. What else can I say about these bad boys? You know, they're tried and true. I trust these things while I'm risking my life out there, basically. They've uh, been great for me year after year. And yeah, I absolutely love these things. Right on, guys. This has been my Maxxis tire check. So stoked to talk a little bit about these bad boys. Hopefully I see you out there on the hill shredding. Well, Griffin's definitely another guy who is climbing that ladder. Sixth at the first stop of this 2023 season down in Rotorua, New Zealand. This is his seventh Crankworks appearance. Let's see what he's got for us. I think he's got a big move off the start drop. Yes! Yes, and a big front flip. Not something you see. Ooh. Right into another huge front flip. Double blind tricks back to back. And then Come double on. flipping down the step down. Gets the landing. Does he have the speed? Flip on the first hit. Gets a pedal in. Here he goes. Oh, the yes. 450 double tail up on the hip. Flipping up into the whale tail. What's he got out? Flip, whip down. Oh, oh. Just slipping that back foot. More issues here in Innsbruck. We saw a blown out tire last round. We see a slip pedal causing this run to derail here for Griffin Paulson. Oh man, second runs are, they're gonna have a lot of riders who are frothing at the mouth in run number two, that's for sure. So crucial to stomp run number one. Take a little bit of that pressure off. Griffin will be another who sets his sight on run number two. We're setting our sights on my favorite camera angle on the course here. This really shows what that start drop is really like. Yeah, they're falling out of the sky for a really, really long time. Oh, look time. at this. He was pinching seat. I think he was looking for a variation there. You see how far back he was on that bike. Yeah, he had to th thrust his hips forward to speed up his rotation. I think you're right. He was looking for more on that first jump. But then he was able to regain Jeez. and come into this step down for this amazing double backflip. Bringing it in goes a little long. This is where we saw him start fighting for speed, having to take pedals. Yeah, he caught the last bike length of transition on that. Yeah, so you know he probably wanted more on that run as well. So we got everything back on track, going for the backflip tail whip out of the whale tail. His cranks move slightly. It's so technical to do a backflip tail whip without moving your cranks. You see a lot of riders lift their kick foot off, kick off the chainstays just to avoid a situation like this. If it moves even a few degrees, it can lead to slipping pedals. Yeah, it looks like his cranks just do about a 90 degree half backspin. And then when his back foot was reaching for the pedal, it wasn't there. Actually, we, you know, sometimes 
might be one of the, I mean, there's many keys to the success of Emil Johansson, but when we watch him in slow motion, you always see him pick his foot off and kick off the chain stays to avoid any crank movement. Can you do it, man? Easier said than done. I'm gonna get this. That's right, Griff. Put it all on black and run number two. Okay, so next rider is going to be Max Fredrickson. The Swede, he's got three third places in his trophy closet. Two of them coming just last season after a big gap between podium appearances. Before that, it was Joyride 2016. So a big return to form here for Max Fredrickson. Starting last season, continuing into this season. This guy trains harder than anybody. Here we go, let's see if it pays off. Nice little toboggan to warm things up. Oh, he looks like he was going for the tuck no-hander. Gets the 360 off, flip bar to bar. So already a couple of miscues here, but he is regaining composure. Double truck down the step down. Downside double tail up on the first hip. Flip tail up on the second hip. Caught so early. Plenty of speed, looking really, really comfortable and smooth. It's okay. Let's finish strong here for Max Fredrickson. The quad truck, 360, with four bar spins. On a day like today, you need to do what Max Fredrickson just did. If you miss a variation, put it out of your mind ASAP and move on to the next feature. Great work there for Max. Yeah, that quadruple bar spin on the end, that was amazing. Able to get that off. I mean, that's the second time we've seen a variation with four bar spins today. The level out here is insane, ladies and gentlemen. The crowd is bigger than we've ever seen as well. That's right, Max, run number two, but good job here in run number one. Keeping things moving. Of course, he was looking for a 360 tuck no hander off the top drop there. He was looking for the same trick out of the whale tail. But, you know, he will get scored for the 360. Yeah, a couple of miscues that were a little obvious on the way down. Definitely has more in the tank. You know, you got to wonder so sometimes, is it just the wind in your mind that's playing games, or is it really the wind? Yeah, there's both. There's both, right? There's the real wind, and then once the wind stops, there's still that feeling you have of it's a windy day. And it's tough to put that out of your head. Rob is hanging out with Max. Let's hear it, Rob. Hello, Max. We're going to have a look at your replays in a minute. How was that run for you? It looked pretty good from where I was stood. Well, nothing really played out as I was planning on, but uh, yeah. Ended up uh, not doing my drop trick, not my first trick, not my step down trick, so I basically just winged the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Second run coming up, though, I guess you're going to, you, you got a bit left in the tank then. Yeah, I feel like I. Uh, I woke up a little bit now, so I definitely have to go as hard as I can on the second one to land everything I want. Are the conditions playing up? Is it more in your mind or is it a real thing, the wind today? It is a real thing, thing for sure. Um, the wind has kind of been like switching from headwind to tailwind, headwind to tailwind, so I think that was uh, one of the factors that my uh, brain just shut off. <laughs> and what did you do on that last jump? Uh, I was not going to do that, but I did a 360 quad bar spin. I was going to do tail whips. Why the change of mind at the last minute? Uh, I guess the whole run was a bit of a wing, so why not wing the last one as well? <laughs> if you're doing it on a wing like that, you're doing well, mate. We'll see you in run two. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> so good. You know, we saw in speed and style yesterday, improvisational skills paying off. Lemoyne decided to do a trick he wasn't planning on, and I love that fact that Max is able to just go, I don't know what's going on here. The plan is in the bonfire. Let's just go for a quad truck. He says he's a little bit more woken up now. I don't know. I splash cold water on my face to wake up. I don't necessarily do 360 quad bar spins, but hey, whatever floats your boat, Max. Yeah, to have the, the quadruple bar spin to be the, the default go-to when things aren't going your way is pretty good. Here we go. Things were going his way to start the season. He finally cracked onto the podium with a third in Rotorua, New Zealand. Tom Eisted would love to get back up on there on those steps. Here we go. Eisted on course. Yeah. Gets that cork flip on the step down. Big double backflip on that gigantic first double. A lot of opportunity with some mistakes out of the other riders. Front flip, tuck no hander on the step down. Also, he was going for a tuck no hander there as well. Let's see if he can regain. Oh! For the 
twist it. Oh, oh, no. No. The trick that took him out in both runs in Australia. More of the same here. History repeating itself. Tom Eisted down on the twister. The twister, a corked out 1080 degree rotation. Ah, he was stomping in practice. One of the things when, you know, we've seen we've seen Tom in this position a few times where he goes down mid run. We saw it twice in Innsbruck, or in, sorry, not in Innsbruck, but in Cairns. And it's because he doesn't, he never says die. He's never gonna stop. He's so committed. We see him here, he's just doing this one for the fans. Big tuck no hander down the step down. I think that's a smart move. You know, the last time he was on the course, it wasn't a crash. Boom! Blasting the quarter pipe. Amplitude there on the quarter pipe. So he's healthy, he's shaking off that crash. Oh my lord, that was intense. Interesting to hear from Max there, right? He's saying the wind is switching direction. Something we can't tell from where we're standing. So that insight, hear it from the horse's mouth is insane. The difference speeds when the wind is with you versus against you is insane. Let's see if that played out at all here in this run. I love this corked out flat drop flip. It's so stylish. So unique. Nobody's doing it like that. And then straight into this double backflip. Such a slow rotation. The rule is you do one flip up and you do one flip on the way down. You see him spot his landing there right at the peak of his height and pulls it back around and brings the bike into the landing perfectly. So here we go, here's the twister. Mm, a little bit short. Slightly short and it bucks him over the front. He was smart though, he went to the left side of the landing and with this being a hip. Actually, it's a hip to the right though, isn't it? Yeah, so maybe he transferred a little bit too far. Yeah, so he was going to the long end of the jump. So if he can switch the lineup a little bit on that, if he ends up at that jump with the same amount of speed, hopefully he can shorten it up by going inside. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my white pants are dirty, but I still got a smile on my face. Yeah, you know, it was interesting when uh, Nikolai was talking to him earlier, he said he had something even more to push on the second run. Now what do you do? Yeah, well, sometimes the safety run gets thrown in the bonfire as well, and you go straight for the banger run in run number two. I have a feeling, Tom I said, is always all or nothing, so that's probably what we're going to see in run number two. Where we're getting a look at who the next rider at the top is going to be. We just had Isid, so that means this will be the big man, Tim Bringer. What an animal this guy is. Three second places. So just like David Godzik, Bringer is biting at the heels of Emil Johansson. Yeah, third place here last year. I was talking to Tim earlier. He was saying how much he was enjoying the course and how good he felt that last year was good. It was a breakthrough for him, but he felt even better here today. I mean, when you're at the point where you've had five podiums, Three second places. That's just one Emil Johansson mistake away from a win there on three occasions. So Tim Bringer watching the story unfold here, knowing that he wants to be one of those riders going in to run number two with a safety score in the bag. He's being smart here. The flags are looking good for Bringer. Dropping. We got the right. signal. Man in. Tim Bringer dropping. Big flare. That's the biggest trick we've seen on the quarter pipe. Truck, truck, truck driver in the step down. Whip, <laughs> double whip to bar spin on the first double. Oh. Double backflip down the step. Oh. We saw him do that last year. He went a little long. 360, he's able to keep it going. Double truck there. We saw triple in practice. Come on, Tim. No way. So he's maintaining. It sounds like we got another. Oh my, come on. Slightly. A cash roll into the whale tail. Slightly under rotating the spin on the cash roll and coming down back tire first. I think it probably grabbed one of those seams there on their ribs. Yeah, he lined it right up with the seams. We talk about getting caught in a rut right there. He landed 90 degrees. 
to where he was hoping to be. Oh man, okay, the amplitude of that double flip on the step down was ridiculous. That jump, we call it a step down because the lip is taller than the landing inherently, so you're always coming out of the sky. But he launched himself out of a catapult into the sky to have enough air time for two flips on that feature. This was going to be an incredibly high scoring run. Let's look back. Oh, flip double whip to bar. The flip double whip I thought was enough. I was like, that's a banger trick there on feature two. Yeah, absolutely. Back flip, double tail whip, and then watch this bar spin come in right here at the end. Grabs it with his feet, pinches the seat with his knees, spins those bars. And remember, he did a flare on the quarter pipe too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're not There's seeing that too many double riders really risk a trick on that feature, but Bringer going for absolutely every point he can find out there on the course. Do you notice how tight he kept his arms in on those tail whips? Sticking with the bike. All right, we're gonna get a look here at this cast roll. This is a 720 degree rotation. You typically don't see that into a whale tail, so this would have scored really high. And I feel like he landed kind of 90 to the landing. A little bit past, but blew out immediately. Yeah, look, the air is already all the way out of the tire. By the time he came into frame, this is yeah. going to be a great angle to see it. Yeah, we'll get to see what the tire does here. Yep, immediately. Yeah, that double backflip puts some importance on the double backflip on the step down. What always kind of spooked me about tricking step downs is it's blind. When you go off the lip, you can't see where the landing is. It makes a lot it of tough these... to judge speed. You see him land at the bottom of the transition. Yeah, a lot of these these other jumps, they're <laughs> step up, so the landings are a little bit taller and you can kind of gauge your speed a little better. That, that That's not the fact on a step down. Next rider at the top of the course. Now, what a season this guy is having. David Godziak picking up a pair of silver medals already. Let's take it back to the last stop in Cannes, Alan. Yeah, amazing, amazing run here. I heard more than one person say this that if this was pulled, that would have been the top step of the podium. Yeah. He was so close. The money launderer here, the Castrol tail whip to opposite tail, the Castrol windshield wiper, and he was on the bike. He had it. Yeah, so close, so close. That would be one of the biggest tricks we've ever seen in slope style history. What is he going to choose out there today? Nikolai, what do you think he's got planned? David, David honestly has some of the most insane tricks in the sport. He has the twister no-hander to bar spin. He has the cash roll windshield wiper. He has triple tail whips. He has double backflip variations. I could just go on and on. I know he's been doing the twister no-hander up top. I'm not sure if he's going to add the bar spin for the first run. That'd be extremely risky. And as you guys just saw the replay, the cash roll windshield wiper on the last one, I think if he wants to win today, he's gonna need that move. <laughs> so I'm hoping to see it. I'm not calling anyone out, but I know David's trying to bring the heat because he's hungry for a win. Let's go, David. Oh my goodness, let's go, David is right. You know what, I was wondering, it's cool to hear Nikolai speculate that we may see it on the last jump. I was wondering if the last jump offers enough air time. Compared to that jump in Australia, the last jump, I wonder if it has as much. He needed a little bit more in Australia. What's he going to choose out here? We're moments away from finding out. David Godziak on course. Yeah, backflip bar spin down the drop, dropping huge tuck oh. no-handed twister. Come on, Tyre. So he's starting off strong. Big, stylish can-can tire grab 360. Gets the triple tail up on the hip. Cash roll bar spin Ooh. on the next hip. Front yeah. flip tuck no-hander up in the whale tail. Tuck oh, no-hander three. That. Down, let's see what he's got. Oh, the cash roll tail, no, over the bars. No, just inches short on the final jump in a run that really could have made waves. Oh, come on. He even got his hands off on that 360 out of the whale tail. That would have been the only blemish leading up to that point. He snuck it in at the last second. Yeah, Come he, on. he held on to it for quite a while before he got the arms off, but he managed to get full extension. Ah, just moments before we started the broadcast, one of Godziak's final practice runs, he stomped the cleanest cash roll tail up on that last jump. 
Who knows? I mean, I'm trying to gauge which way the wind is going right now, whether it's head or tail, but he was just inches short. We're really going to be able to break it down on our replay. So here, I mean, we can't downplay. We, we breeze over it because we've got so many more features to come, but that flat drop, backflip, bar spin, we're seeing multiple riders do that out here. It's such a huge high-scoring combo off the flat drop. And this, a tuck, no-handed, cork 1080 <laughs> on a bicycle, people. <laughs> I cannot believe what we're calling these tricks yeah, these days because these riders skis. are killing it. And then bringing it back to some style right there. Probably a smart move. We saw some riders having trouble there, and it gave him the speed to get the triple tail whip off clean on the first hit. This was a gamble here. Yeah, front flip, tuck, no-hander over the city of Innsbruck, up into the whale tail. Perfect Completely extension. Completely blind at this point. That's a blind landing right into a blind lip on this next step up out of the whale tail. Watch how long he takes to get into position to take these hands off here. We saw Max Fredrickson not take the hands off a couple times. And, oh, David going, I got to get this. And look, he had the speed here. He got a good pedal in. What happened? It could be the, the wind, you know? Gets the feet on the pedals, finishes the rotation, and where does he land? Oh, yeah, decking out by about a foot. Yeah, the flags would indicate, as he was going off the lip, that he was going straight into headwind. Mm. So it looks like just not quite enough speed to get over that knuckle. And when he cased all of that momentum and force and energy, spitting him out the front. OK, silver lining. He rolled out nice and smooth into some soft dirt. He looks like he's feeling good for run number two. <laughs> I mean, even though he crashed on the last jump, he still scored a 60.75, hanging out in top five position. Just goes to show what an eventful day we're having here today with one rider left to drop in run number one of the Thule slope style Innsbruck. And guess who's at the top, Alan? Guess, just take a guess. Is he from Sweden? He's from Sweden. OK, um, Emil Johansson. Yes. Yes. That's the guy. I do He's have it right in front of me. I cheated. Crankwork slope style wins. He's won the Triple Crown not once, but twice. He has the, the opportunity to win the Crankworx Triple Crown for the third time if he wins another event this season. Let's let's just rewind the clock a little bit. Start of the season, Crankworx Rotorua. Break down this trick for me. So we talk about the technicality of Emilio Hansen. This is his spin axis. Right now, his front foot is on the inward of his spin. So that indicates he's doing an opposite rotation 360. That makes that bar spin right there an inward bar spin. That is also an opposite direction. And then when he grabs on, he kicks this downside tail up. So now he's going the inward of his spin direction. And that makes it a regular, not one, but double tail whip. So the technicality of these opposite and unnatural directions, they mix and match. It's not always one. And you see him there with his eyes on the prize. He sees his pedals. He knows where his feet need to go. Next, he looks at the landing and stomps it exactly where he needs to be. A little bit of a buck on this one, actually. But he was able to hold on and ride it to a victory. We're talking about an opposite 360, an opposite bar spin, and two regular tail ups. And that all took place on one jump, the jump that happened to be the final Magaza money booter of the Crankworx Rotorua slope style course. Absolutely ridiculous when you slow it down and bring context to it. And he's doing that right now. He's slowing down and giving himself the opportunity to have the best possible conditions for this run here. He did the same thing in his run last year. He took his time, waited for those flags. And as we heard Max Fredrickson note, he's not only trying to gauge the speed and the intensity of the wind, but he's paying attention to which direction it's going. If it's a tailwind, it's going with him. It's going to push him long, and the opposite will happen if it's a headwind. This is what we're talking about right here. Brandon Semenuk in his long slope style career. Let's bear in mind, there were less events per season, and it took Brandon Semenuk many, many years to rack up 11 slope style wins. Emil Johansson just decided to keep on winning once he learned what it felt like on the Crankbrook Slope Style World Tour. He has now racked up 11 wins of his own. So a lot, I'm not gonna say a lot on the line here. I'm just gonna say a lot of opportunities for big things to happen here in this run for Emil Johansson. 
Definitely, that's a perfect way to put a lot of opportunities. He's going to give himself the best chance at seizing those opportunities. The more patient he is waiting for the wind to subside here. And uh, yeah, the, the carrot tangling. The crank work, slope style, triple crown trophy. Wait for him at the bottom of the course if this run goes as planned and he's able to score higher than all these other world-class riders. Emil Johansson on course. Starting out with a foot jam to flip X up. We're gonna get a oh, yeah. 360 triple, triple tail whip. Stepping it up from what we've seen. Then there's the opposite spin, 360 windshield wiper. Regular three windshield wiper oh, look like. Thank you. Here we go, now we're going opposite. Three inward table to downside tail whip. Oh, opposite cork seven. <laughs> opposite back and forth truck driver. Oh, and the opposite three whip to finish things off. What's he gonna do on the quarter pipe? Big alley -oop bar spin to invert. Oh, the moment. That was a close one. I even got mixed up there. Thank you well, for the backup. We'll see. Well, maybe I was too. So we'll back and back. forth on everything. Ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> the technicality. Oh, man, you stomped run number one right there, buddy. I wonder if he's like, can't believe I put it together, or if he's going, oh, I wish I had a three. On opposite three double whip on the last jump. I wonder what's going on between the ears and under that helmet there. You know, if I had to guess, I think it's probably part frustration of what was left on the course and part just stoked to make it down. Score to beat, man. Still holding strong. Lucas Hooper with that 85. This run had, uh, we have a lot to digest from this run right here. And that's exactly what Emil is doing right now. Man. We saw him finish his run last year with an opposite 360 double tail up where the 360 was opposite. Both the tail ups were opposite. Nikolai is hanging out with Mike. Hey, Neil, let's hear Bro, it. How did it like watching the guys make these uncharacteristic mistakes? How did that run feel? Uh, yeah, it's, I wouldn't say anything less than terrifying to stand up top and uh, waiting out the wind without actually having a clear gauge on if it's all good or not. So. Dropping into the run, I could already feel the wind picking up, and um, yeah, I struggled with speed throughout the hips. I didn't even make it through properly, so yeah. Well, I'm stoked to be down here, one piece. Nice work, bro. Honestly, we know you're riding, and we know you downgraded some of the stuff in that run, but really smart. What's your plans for the second run now? You're gonna see how things play out? Totally, yeah, that's always the plan. Yes, sir. Oh, good to hear from Emil right there what it's like to stand at the top of this course. It sounds like relief that the run went the way it did. And here we're going to get a look at this trick on the step down. So it's a regular 360 tail. He stops that tail, decides to send it on a trip the opposite direction. Call that the 360 windshield wiper. Such a huge trick on that step down feature. He said he was kind of... Feeling speed issues in the hips. We see the regular 360 bar to downside tail on the first hip. Then he goes opposite 360 inward table to down whip on the second hip. It didn't look like he was struggling. It looked pretty spotless to me. Yeah, it sure did. It sure did look very, very clean. We got to see a nice look there where he kicks those chain stays like you were saying earlier rather than the pedals. Oh, then this was I almost this <laughs> opposite spin off access cork 720 into the whale tail. And we saw Godziak mess up on that. No matter which axis you're doing it on, a 720 into that thing, there's barely enough air time for it. He squeaks it around. Yeah, you see the head corking out and spotting the landing and bringing the body all the way around. And then that was the opposite back and forth truck, spinning the bars both directions while his rotation is spinning opposite and then getting this regular three whip. Opposite 360 with an right. opposite tail whip. I mean, as if it's not hard enough to do a combo like a 360 tail whip. He did do an opposite 360 double tail whip last year, so he may have been thinking about that. But man, the score to beat is just an 85, and with how much he packed into this run, there it is. There's that relief you're talking about. I think you were right there. Absolutely stoked to make it to the bottom of the hill. Okay, waiting for the score here. Emil Johansson, the man who has his name on the Triple Crown Trophy, not once, but twice. 
He wins another event this season. He'll get his name on there three times. The score to beat an 85. The score coming in here for Emil Johansson. It is a 92.5. Johansson in the lead. A <laughs> big smile. Emil, fantastic. You're happy with your first run? Great score. Yeah, I'm super stoked, honestly, uh, with these conditions. Just to make it down is, uh, yeah, success in itself. So, uh, yeah, I take that. And we spoke to you before, you know, you mentioned the conditions. It was obvious they were stressing you out. A good run under your belt. What's your plan now for your second run? Yeah, re-prep and be ready. React as you need to? Totally, yeah. All good. Thank you, sir. Crazy scenario we find ourselves in here. A lot of riders with issues in run number one, but the ever consistent Emil Johansson able to do it despite challenging conditions. He throws down a 92.5. Big names, middle of the pack there. Guys like David Godziak and Tim Bringer will be dropping early as we get all the riders back up to the top of the course. We will run them in reverse order. Lowest scores going first. And the guy with the top score, Emil Johansson, has the opportunity to sit back and watch these runs, see if anybody can knock him out and put the pressure on. Well, crazy show here, run number one in the Thule Slope style Innsbruck. Run number twos are going to be insane. We're going to break it all down in our halftime show. Don't go away. The making of a legend, Stevie Smith, AKA the Chainsaw. He was a bit unpredictable, he was creative, he was wild. He did have a great life, full of giggles and laughs and adrenaline. The untold story of a true champion. Long live Chainsaw. Now available on Red Bull TV. Really awesomely fun. Welcome to the video. This is Eric Fedko, and this is Emil Johansson. Oh, I've heard about this. We follow them as they go to different competitions, check out radical bike spots, and lay down dope bangers. Great. Some people think that Emil is an alien. Sounds like being an alien is pretty good. Holy shit. We hope you enjoy. Raising the Bar. Now available on Red Bull TV. Twist. No, why? Turn. Absolute madness. And drop into the heart of Katowice for another epic edition of Red Bull Roof Ride. Oh! Astonishing airtime, massive pressure. Let's go! The bar is raised and the riders are sending it. This is a winning Red Bull, here we go. Red Bull Roof Ride, July 1st, live on Red Bull TV. Have you ever stared at a picture and came alive? They say every rider has a calling. 15 athletes on their mind trip through Europe. A fantastic ride into the wildest dreams of fighting. The Old World, now available on Red Bull TV. Super exciting to be here in Europe. We're actually here at Nordket at the top of Innsbruck, checking out the scenes. Boss, I'm coming in hot! <laughs> the views are pretty insane from up here. We can see a whole lot of landscape, a whole lot of mountains. We can see where we're racing. It's pretty awesome. And later on, we're gonna go check out a little surf spot in the river and have a cruise around the town. Zero experience for ever surfing. Oh, you hold um, on to that thing. You wanna take the rope over the shoulder? So this is a first for me, which is exciting and a little bit nerve-wracking. <laughs> you have zero surf experience. Yeah. <laughs> 
It was super fun. Once I got the hang of it and I like tried a couple boards, carving a little bit, and I threw a shack into the camera, and as I carved back across, I was just like, whoa, pow! That is so wild! <laughs> Bass, can you describe that experience in three words? Struggling very hard. <laughs> <laughs> I've um, never done anything like that in Australia or anywhere else, so it was super cool to come over here to Innsbruck, get to experience something like that right near the city. So now I think I'm in the mindset where I can go enjoy the week of racing and competing and just enjoy it with all the buddies. Crazy first runs here, the Thule Slope style Innsbruck, but we got the man still on top here, Emil Johansson, last guy to drop. And the top score there, 92.5, belongs to him. And it's going to be very eventful in run number two. We're looking forward to seeing so many riders clean their runs up. And uh, let's chat about this a little bit. Welcome up into the booth here to Eric Fedko. What up, dude? Eric, I mean, you, Three second places, you finished the season off in third. Uh, definitely looking forward to getting you back on the course. More about that later. What were your thoughts about watching those runs right there? So many issues for so many of those riders. What are some of the standout moments for you? Dude, definitely not easy out here. It's pretty windy the last couple of days. So I think the boys didn't have the practice they needed. But dude, seeing the first runs, uh, especially Hoopy, Toquado and Emil throwing down bangers. Um, it's insane, like, watching it from a different perspective, you know, I'm out here, I'm not competing, uh, still injured at the moment, so I'm getting hyped for the boys, man, it's, it's sick, and I think there's a lot of banger runs to come, like, Tim messed up his first run, David messed up his first run, uh, I said as well, and um, I'm hyped for the second round, and can't wait to see the show. For sure, all those names are definitely exciting, I can't wait to see all those runs, but one really stands out for me is the 85 score from Lucas Hooper. This score stood for a really long time until the final rider to drop. Yeah. Let's take another moment to break down this run here. Huge trick to start it off. He's the only guy out there doing that three with flat drop. And dude, the funny triple bar after it, it's so hard to carry the speed after the free rip, so bang around. I think he, he had the whole run dialed, just missed like the trick on the second hip. Like you see here, it's just going for a single tail whip. So he definitely needs to step that up to get on the top spot, but I think I think he's firing it up in the second round. So. Yeah, to think that he didn't get exactly Look, what he wanted. Seven he's on still in second. Down. And then the double flip in the end. Finishing the run with the tail bear. It's a banger run, bro. It's a banger run, bro. <laughs> That's the quote right there. If we needed to sum it up in one sentence, it's a banger run, bro. I'm really glad he went all out doing the double flip in run number one, too, because that could have been something that he saved for the second run. But as the cookie crumbled, that was the right move. Yeah. And if he, if he cleans it up in the second round, as I said, the second hip, uh, I think he wants to do a cork seven. If he got that, he's totally fine to get on right. top. It's fun. But it's fun to have see. you up here and hear what you think <laughs> he may be thinking about for his second run. He's going to be second to last to drop because Emil has the top score at 92.5. He'll be able to sit back and watch what the other riders do. But let's sit back and watch what he did in run number one. This flat drop backflip X up. He was pass clicked on that. And then just a casual 360 triple tail, you know, like nothing. Um, just doing a thing out there, you know. The mill things. Fuck. It's windshield wiper on the You step got that down. trick now. Yeah, but dude, doing it on a step down is so much more difficult. So he's being on it doing the run switch, free unturned down to downside whip. No one does those tricks, you know. He's like, he's out there doing alien things, you know. <laughs> so true. Yeah, just yeah. from a rider's standpoint, like we talk about the technicalities of Emil's runs, just the opposites and how those mix together and how it, it's just like a bag of tricks that he has. How difficult is it to do some of these these tricks or unnatural directions? It's just dude, doing them back to back is so much harder and he's just so dialed on every single trick. Uh, you can see it, it looks for him. It's a safe run. Like everyone is fighting and doing the hardest tricks and he's just making it look so easy. Um, and that's why he wins everything, basically. But uh, I think, like, there's some riders today who, who are super hungry. I just talked to David, to Tim, and they have some, some tricks in the back. So let's see. Yeah, I, riders I definitely they got some tricks the day. in the back. They're looking yeah. to unleash. So we're excited to see all those runs, but we're also excited to see you back on, on course. 
once you heal up your ankle. Let's just talk to where you were before you hit a couple speed bumps in the road. I feel like you had your navigation in your car set to first place, and the path was clear. We Then we had you know a little bit of road construction, a couple speed bumps. First one coming in Australia when you're up at the top of the course. You've got your second run. You're sitting in second place. Your run's coming together, and then what happened? Then I just, I don't know, I landed perfect on the truck down whip into the well tail. And I think Nikolai's dad was summoned with the sniper because <laughs> I landed perfect and my wheel blew off. So this is the only thing I can think about. He was just sitting there with the sniper now. Just kidding. <laughs> but I was very close. Uh, and yeah, I can't wait to come back for Joyride this year, which is uh, in one month. And I should be totally fine. For so sure. Let's so then, see. Then you're, we're going to talk about what you're going to be recovered from. We then found ourselves in New Zealand kicking off this year's season. You're looking fantastic, as always. Things are coming together for you. And then a couple more speed bumps. First to one heel and then to your other ankle. Yeah. Talk to me about what that injury was and what it was like actually still riding your run that day with that injury you didn't even know about. Dude, that week in Rotorua was a roller coaster for me. Like I was struggling with some pain in my shoulder and my arm. Couldn't really ride. Had a bad crash on my right ankle. Did a day off, went to the hospital. Everything was fine, you know. Uh, I was stoked to come back on course. And then just before finals, I dropped my foot. Uh, you can see the first crash right there. Uh, this was the heel one, right? That was the heel yeah. on the right foot. Okay. And a big slam on my head right there. But I was fine after that. Uh, and then just before finals, I rolled my left ankle on the flip wheel where I slipped my pedal, um, which was really bad. It like got swollen so big. Uh, got some painkillers, you know. Um, but yeah, actually the foot was completely messed up after the MRI turned out all the ligaments are ripped. And yeah, you can see it right there. Yeah. I can't believe that you rode, man. I saw your ankle. You took your shoe off. And I go, okay, cool. Let's look at the alternate list and see who's going to be coming in. Yeah. And then you're up at the top of the course dropping. Bummer, man. But dude, good times to come. I'm back. Back stronger than ever. Yeah, a couple of weeks, so can't wait. Yeah, we're looking at our next subject. Something we've seen today, a lot of flat drop variations. Kind of the hype was building on the social media, all the riders during practice. Flat drop variations. What are some of the big things you've seen today? Uh, today, I think one of the biggest tricks was definitely Lucas Hubert with the flat drop 360 tail whip. Uh, everyone is like flipping, but also like Paul Kuderick and David with the flip bar. Uh, I think they haven't been done in any slopeside comp yet, so. These are the biggest tricks for sure out there. Yeah, so um, some firsts maybe coming It's crazy in. how it steps up every year. I, I saw it like two years ago, we're on the top level, but every year it's getting more and more like... I want to throw a wrench in that, okay? Hard. We always talk about, oh, progression, everything's getting better and better. Let's not forget, I remember 2018, Brett Reeder doing a backflip tail up off the flat drop right there. I feel like that was ahead of its time. And now this event, we're seeing riders go, all right, let's figure out what other flat flip variations we can do. Those bar spins, tucked on handers. What do you think, just reflecting on that flip whip, are we going to see riders setting their sights on that in the future? I mean, you know, Brett Reeder is one of a kind, always, uh, always been doing crazy runs, crazy tricks. He won Crankworks contest. Um, and I think it's, uh, it was a sick time with this trick, but as you said, like it's like the drops tricks are not quite there yet, but as I said, he's one of a kind too. I so. feel like it's getting there now though. As soon as yeah, we started to see they're on getting Instagram, close to it for sure. Like we're getting there. Somebody's gonna bite that off again because you know now with that uh, mm. perspective, we know that's gonna score so high if somebody brings it back. It might have yeah. been underscored in the past. You know? Yeah, but dude, Hoopy is pretty close with a free whip I as know. well. But yeah. And Maybe. that was cool. He he started doing that last season, and now I think about it. He was practicing on Brett Reeder's setup, and that's yeah. how he got that flat three whip drop as well. So I don't know, good stuff to come um, on the flat drops. You know, that obstacle has been there since the beginning of slope style, and we still are only scratching the surface of what tricks are possible on it. So one thing that has um, changed but possibly gone back to normal this year as well is that we're going back to a more condensed schedule, starting in March, finishing in July, which is more similar to our March to August schedule. The last couple of years were crazy. It was spread out from June all the way till November. As a rider following the tour, what do you prefer? Are you stoked to have a longer off-season now, a lot of time to get ready for Rotorua next season? <clears throat> for sure, I prefer the long off-season because last season and this season was basically the never-ending season stopping in Rotorua, starting in Rotorua again. Uh, but from my situation right now, I prefer the longer season. <laughs> so I have more contests to come. Um, but yeah, 
I'm happy to go to the joyride and then get a big rest, get back on the training schedule. And Dude, how does that play into um, your favor going into joyride, your next event, having a little bit of a break, kind of coming in, feeling fresh and confident? Actually, I quite enjoy being here and like looking the show from the outside because I mean, it's been a tough season, especially like the never ending thing. It was so much going on, like shootings, contests, everything uh, was quite a lot. So I quite enjoy uh, having a big rest right now and being like all in for Joyride, you know? I Joyride imagine, is the big man. show. Like, Joyride is the Super Bowl, basically. For so sure. I can't wait for that. Yeah, you're going to not be on the sidelines for that one, and we're looking forward to it. But it's got to be so much different. Does it give you more perspective seeing what it's like from the fans' perspective? <clears throat> Sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> from the sidelines, not competing, do you think that's going to invigorate you? You know, you have. Uh, a different perspective of what the energy is like, what the crowd feels because yeah. you're in the crowd right now. Dude, it's insane, actually, <laughs> dude. Like, I always looked the contest, obviously, like, I watched all the runs when I was competing, but I was kind of in my zone, so I couldn't really focus on everything. And now, seeing that, getting hyped for the boys, I get hyped, like, for the next couple events that, that are up, so it's a dream, actually. Yeah, well, good luck finishing up the recovery, and we're excited to see you back on course, but it's been awesome to have you up here at halftime Thank as well you. because I'm you say things that we don't think about. <laughs> you have that, you know, inside perspective on things, and, uh, yeah, enjoy uh, grabbing yourself a beer out there and watching run number two. For sure. Getting hyped for the boys. Let's go. Oh, I'm already <laughs> ready. I'm already ready. So... We're going to get him back up to the top. We're going to drop him for one final run. The man to be right now, more of the same, 92.5. Emil Johansson, the man to be. An active life, I imagine it's different and probably the same for everyone, right? People like Emil Johansson like to test themselves in competition. But there's another 10,000 ways to find that feeling, too. It's a combo of the terrain, the bike and the rider, where everything kind of simplifies into one. People like to call it flow, right? Yeah, I guess it's that sweet spot where the challenge you're taking on is a perfect match for your skill set. Okay, a stretch for your skill set, but within reach. That's what makes riding fun. And what's kind of cool about that feeling is that whether you're out on a trail ride, a jump line that scares you, an epic day out with friends, or you're competing to rewrite the history book, riding on two wheels is one of the simplest ways to find that feeling. Take a look inside. And he was going so far! If you make one mistake, it's game over. The menacing world of mountain bike racing. Ah! What do you mean by menacing? <laughs> with six off-the-chain stories from up-and-coming rookies we have a good time to experienced riders don't film this part <laughs> race tapes now available on red bull tv take a deep breath and dive into the red bull cliff diving season 2023 the decisive display of focus and skill. Don't miss out on the ultimate spectacle of human potential. Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series 2023. Live on Red Bull TV. Good stuff if you're hanging out with us. Live broadcast right now, the Thule Slopestyle Innsbruck. You're exactly where you want to be if you're a Slopestyle fan because we're right in the middle of the action here. We had run one. It was full of ups and downs. But Emil Johansson is once again the man to beat. The score is a 92.5. It was a banger run, but still we know he has more to push if anybody's able to push him. And wow, there's a lot of riders out there who could possibly do it. David Godziak not getting his perfect first run. Tim Bringer, same story. We saw in the chat box, if, if you want to join the conversation right here on Red Bull Bikes YouTube channel, comment. I'm reading them. And uh, I, I have one I want to talk about 
right here. Ryan Williams, our Willie, the Nitro Circus Superstar, X Games Superstar, says, I'm going to teach David some scooter tricks so he can fire them out at the next stop. That's pretty cool to know that our Willie's watching right now. And I would love to see what kind of scooter tricks he would train David Godziak to do. David Godziak, one of the you know, best BMX competition riders currently right now when it comes to dirt and big air. And one of the guys we definitely feel like has what it takes, considering he had two second places to start the season. He's gonna have another opportunity to try to best that 92.5 here. Who else is jumping out at you who may have an opportunity to either beat Emil or crack onto the podium for the first time there, Alan? Man, it's almost like a fresh contest here in, in some ways. So many riders having issues on their first runs. It's really all going to come down to the second run for pretty much the, you know, top top five. They had some pretty, some pretty solid runs, but above that, I think everybody's got a lot of room to improve. All right, Nikolai, what's the vibe going like up there? Oh, the boys are ready to start their second runs. Carolo Dirt, I have not seen a mentality on a rider like this. This rider is so confident in his own skill. He crashed in the first run, but he was talking to us. He was saying, all or nothing. I bring the gas all the time. You know, like relentless. So I really am looking forward to seeing this run. I want to see him lay it on the line, and hopefully he gets it. He's got his boy Bienvenido Aguado from Spain watching the win for him. Yes. And I think he's sending him. Let's go. Yes, thank you, Nikolai. All or nothing, full gas. Miguel Guerrero on course. He's definitely going to bring the gas. Gets that truck driver off the drop in. Yes. Into that flip. Barsman tail again, clean as can be. Flip tail whip down the step, down a little bit over rotation. So he's fighting for speed here. Let's see if he can get it around. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, he oh. just a little bit too much to the inside. Full 90 on the landing. Oh, man, it's, you know, good to see him slide out on the downside and not get pitched, but he's got to just be so frustrated. That run was going great. First guy to drop means he had the lowest score from run number one going into run number two. And that's it. That's all we're going to see from Miguel Guerrero, Corolo Dirt, here at Innsbruck Slope Style 2023. Yeah, I think what happened is he had he was fighting for speed a little bit. We'll, we'll get down there, but let's watch the beginning of his run here. Gets that truck driver, 360 bar spin off the step down, and this a huge trick on the first double. Flip, bar spin, tail it. Spots the landing, comes in perfectly. Spinning the bars three times around. Oh, See that was front so end front come time. up high, over rotates. So I think what happened was on the step down, he he over rotated the tail whip on the flip whip just a little bit. And from that point on, he was fighting for speed. And what neat things you can do on these hip jumps is you can kind of inside them. The more inside you go, the shorter the jump goes. So if you're fighting for speed, you aim for that inside. And I think he kind of overcompensated a little bit and ended up alley-ooping and over rotating that spin. Yeah, good point. That's I, I would agree with you. That's exactly what happened. So, Tom Eistead here. He's tasted the podium. He wants another bite. Final run of the day here for Eistead. What's it gonna be? Gets that sick corked flip off the drop in straight into a massive double backflip. Looking really, really clean right here so far. His eyes look focused around that berm. Lands a little bit better on the flip. Tuck no hand in front flip. Gets a 450 in. Let's see if he goes for it, he does. And yes. there it is, there's the twister. Come on, Tom. Truck driver up. Yes. Course, come on, down no. and He's a little bit under rotated on the seven. Oh, man. He got the 10. He was smooth into the whale tail with the cork seven down. A move that he's been doing in practice does not work as planned. OK, he's feeling fine. I guess that answers that question. Feeling quite frustrated. Did he have a visor to begin with? I can't remember. Yeah, there it is. He did, yeah. He wasn't running Nikolai style. The ground There's stole the camera. his visor. That's going to be a shot. Yeah, such a bummer here for Tom. He was looking pretty clean. <laughs> Good as new. Up above this, those massive, massive tricks. You know what? I think I'm just glad he didn't mess up on the 1080 because he messed up on the 1080 both runs in Australia and the first run here, so he at least stomped that. I love this. Corked out flat drop flip. 
leaning back on that first massive jump. He does those corked out as well. He was doing that a lot in practice, kind of similar to the axis rotation he was doing on that flat drop flip. He'll do that in a double flip. And this is where I thought it was on. He landed a little bit cleaner on that. And then for there, for some reason, it was just a 360. Maybe he was just, just setting yeah. it up because he wanted to make sure he got this cork 1080, the twister. You see him spot his landing, straighten out his arms, bend his knees in, and put the bike straight into the landing. Perfect. Keeps it rolling into the whale tail with this truck driver. I love these slow-mo clips. You can see the head spotting the landing. As soon as the head stops spinning, the bike gets pulled straight into the landing. And then this is where we had trouble, Cam. Tell me what you can see. All right, so if I remember correctly, he just came in off kilter, and it looks like there was an under rotation on the spin portion of that Cork 720, which is basically a backflip 360. Looked like he was under on the spin. What are you catching? Yeah, that is what I saw there, under on the spin and had his front end coming up. This so anxious me, to... This, <laughs> I saw this on the first time, and I can't watch again. It, made, it sent lightning bolts up my legs. If I did that, it would hurt so bad. I wouldn't make it to my feet. My feet would be the last thing to touch the ground. <laughs> I feel like I could make it to my nose. Yeah, I'll make it to the back of my head. I can't jump unless I'm on a bike. This guy's well, got hops. Good to Rub. see you. Uh, hello there, boys. <laughs> good to see Tom here drowning his sorrows. That's going to make you feel better, mate. I mean, redemption on the Cork 7, on the Cork 1080, but went wrong a bit further down but you're pushing for big tricks right yeah just going for ricky bobby if you're not first you're last so you gotta push it the boys are level is insane so if you're not pushing yourself you're never going to get anywhere near where you want to be so it doesn't sound like you're going to be changing your approach then it is i mean nikolai and ken's telling me you've got to run for a top three finish it's just a matter of getting to the bottom in it pretty much yeah just got to get back to the uh, training compound and uh, dial everything in again but i tried tried to put a show on for everyone did my best. You certainly did, mate. Congratulations anyway. Thanks, Tom. Good stuff. Tom's got it. You know what? It's It was a long quest to get onto that podium, but it happened. And you know what? The quest starts again. He can do it. All right, what do we got? Who's up there? Is this your guy? Is this Paul Coudere? Come on, Paul. That's what I'm talking about. You got this, my man. So in our little battle right now, I picked Hoopy. He's sitting in second. You need Coudere to crack into the podium for your prediction to come true. Getting the course cleaned up here, smoothed out for this run. It was looking so good for him in run number one, but the flat tire frustrated him and us. Yeah, he had all the pieces to the puzzle on the top half of the course. He had the height, he had the rotations down to a T. He was, everything he wanted to do was coming out effortlessly. Okay, well, we're always wondering what these riders are going to choose for run number two. It sounds like Nikolai might have a little insight. Nikolai? Yo, guys. Yo, guys. Yeah. Um, for Paul's second run, he did have the crash in the first run, but at District Ride and at Cannes, he was putting the one-foot can in the double backflip. And this first dirt-to-dirt -dirt jump for Paul is a humongous double backflip. So I'm interested to see if he takes a risk to do the variation in the double backflip, because score-wise, that makes a huge difference. Yes. But I think the rest of the way, he's going to try to keep it rubber side down, get that switch cork, and get to the bottom. But let's watch this double backflip closely to see the mindset that Paul's in. I love it. I love that little taste right there. I can't wait to see what he does, Alan. And uh, the time is now. You know, if you've got something sitting there in your trick list, the time is now. Obviously, run number one, a throwaway for him with a score of 31.25 as he got a, ha a flat tire halfway down. Waiting for these flags to mellow out before starting run number two here for Paul Coudere. I know you've stood on top of a course a time or two waiting for the win, Cam. What's going through your mind if you're Paul Coudere right now? Uh, positive stuff, man. Look at his video parts. He sets his goals on unfathomable tricks and he's so persistent and you know he accomplishes all those goals and so he has the ability to sit there and visualize success so I would imagine he's just picturing positivity and look at that there's a look at that double backflip where Nikolai is 
hypothesizing what could be possible. There we go. He's off. This is run number two. Gets the double backflip off, so no can-can. So he's still looking really good here. Flip Barsman down the step down. Gets set up for the 720 on the hip. Flip bar to bar, yes. so he did have a small improvisation there. Trucks up. Come on. Flip whip yes. down, looking really solid. Yes! 360 oh. double tail, but just holds on to it. <laughs> Does about the last 90 degree rotation of that on the back wheel. Oh, rodeo manual moment there. It was That's a fight all the way down the course for Paul Couder. You could see it maybe not be what he wants, but an incredible effort and able to get it down with the rubber side down the entire way. Oh, that last landing is going to seem like an eight second rodeo eternity when we watch it in slow motion. The three double whip, he was so separated from the bike. Somehow found those pedals. I thought he was going to get pitched. I'm so stoked that he rolled out. Yeah, definitely not what he wants or what he was going for in that first run, but smart move, getting a run down, getting it clean. We'll definitely see him moving up the leaderboard after that run. Man, here's that double backflip on the dirt to dirt. So much commitment at this point in the rotation. You spot the landing. Do you have it? I feel like the body language when the feet are pointed down, it's like, oh, I need more rotation. Yep, and there was the flip bar spin on the step down. And there's the regular spin, 720. He over rotates a little bit, so now he's in survival mode. Survival mode is a flip bar to bar somehow. That was where we saw him have trouble in the first run with the opposite corked 720. So he's making up his mind as he's working his way down the course based on the speed he has. Some of my favorite moments in slope style happen under those circumstances as well. You know, and when, when the you know what hits the fan, the decisions that you make under pressure sometimes are the legendary moments. Yeah, so he, at this point we were thinking, okay, come on, just get it top to bottom. Get some points going here. Try to crack into that podium here. The flip whip step down, and we're going to get a look at that 360 double tail whip. So this is where riders have been fighting for speed all day long. He whips that double tail around. Now watch, he's landed oh, hey, and gets he's, oh. the end of his rotation bouncing off of his back tire. <laughs> his feet never touch the ground after all. Look at this. This is technically a stomped rollout right here. Handling, feet stay on. Yes, I mean, that's gonna make a big difference when the judges decide what number to put to this run. Well, Rob's hanging out with Paul. Let's hear it, Rob. How are you, Paul? I mean, great to see you get that second run done. I must feel pretty good. I was close on the first one, man. I thought you were falling back off that bridge. Yeah, dude, thank you. I'm like, I'm so stoked to pull a run today because I was so nervous. This course is gnarly. The level is insane, everyone is sending it, so just so happy. Oh fuck, I'm forced, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to spring it on you, but you happy with that? That sounds good, mate. Dude, I'm stoked, I'm healthy, I love the vibe. Love you all. Well done, mate, we'll see you in the next one. Well done, Paul, congrats. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I was thinking that too. I was looking down there, I go, oh, look at this. His score's in, he's fourth. That's pretty great, if he can hold on to that, that would match his best career at Crankwork Slope Style finish. He did that here in 2019, so we'll see how long that can hold up. But man, it pays off to just like stick with it. It would have been easy to take the feet off on that three double whip and just go, oh, let's just try not to crash. But I'm glad he was able to stick that final landing. Whoa, here we go. Tim Bringer, the top of the course. Issues in run number one. He's going to have to build the whole sandcastle again. We just saw Paul Couder do it. Tim sitting in 11th. That is not a number you expect to see next to his name. He wants to do something about that. Yeah, he's ready to go. Starts off with that big flare. Gets that truck on the drop. Flip, double whip, gets to bar it. spin, gets it. Perfectly clean. There's that double flip on the step down. Gets, lands much higher up on the landing this time, so he should have the speed to get what he needs here. Come on. 
Squeaks out the three double whip, gets a double bar spin. Oh, he's getting winded right now, it looks like. Come on. Is that cash yes. roll up and he gets it clean to double truck <laughs> down. Okay, what's he got on the final booter? Triple oh. Slight little bobble he's able to regain in a nice massive flare. Wow. But what a dice roll of a decision. The wind picked up so big for that final jump and he decided to go for a triple tail up. A trick that makes you so vulnerable to wind. You gotta wonder if the size of Tim Bringer is helping or, or making it worse. Because the bigger you are, you're like a sail, right? But he's also, he, he's a pretty solid, stout fixture. You're carrying speed because you're pumping with all your weight down those transitions. But yes, you're right. It's like five sheets to the wind right there. <laughs> oh, what a run there. A little bit of a cuddle slip on that triple whip. Let's take it back up to the start. Clean truck driver off the flat drop. And then in the wind as well, getting this back flip, double tail whip, and sneaking those bars in after he catches the pedals. Look how tight he keeps his hands to his waist. That's key with keeping those whips going around. Able to get that bar spin in just before. And this is where he landed. Notice how much higher he landed on the landing in this second run on that double back flip. So clean. Slightly under rotated on that three double whip, but he was able to regain composure on the hit before this jump where he had trouble in the first run. Yeah, we didn't get to see how that double flip on the step down would have scored in run number one because he didn't finish the run. He came up under rotated on this cash roll in run number one. But now we're going to get to see what the score of this run could potentially be. It was only question marks after run number one. Yeah, he really knew that he needed to give it all he had for the cash roll into that whale tail, didn't he? Yeah, he got that snap off the lip much, much better, and he was able to rotate all the way around. And I wonder if he was improvising here, knowing, all right, headwind, tail ups give you more distance, but they also leave you susceptible to getting tilted if the wind is even slightly side. Yeah, I think that is why we had that pedal slip there. You can see he's a little bit off axis when he comes in for the landing and he's correcting a little bit there by yeah, stomping see. his foot down. The body language says, all right, when this bike comes around, I'm going to be tilted and I need to figure out how to deal with that. So, Tim Bringer, run number two is a smooth one, 80.87. Knocks Kudair out of fourth place. Bringer now sitting in fourth. salvage mission right there, you know? Yeah, maybe not the position that he wanted to be in in this contest, but in today's conditions, you know, able to make it from the top to bottom, that's a win for everybody. <laughs> that was a sick move. <laughs> he just finishes it and then signs it. <laughs> just finish it and give oh, the cup back. Thank you, thank you. So much. Just give the cup back. Just take the pen. <laughs> oh, that's a nice pen, thanks. I needed a drink. Yeah, Griffin Paulson up at the top of the course. He's been front flipping this start flat drop. So Griffin, a throwaway run in run number one. Looking to better his best Crankworx result, which was a sixth as we kicked off the season in New Zealand back in March. A little bit of a wait here for the wind. This is his last chance here on the course today, so he wants to make sure the conditions are as optimal as possible. Yeah, with this being his seventh Crankworx appearance, he knows the ropes. <laughs> so it's hard too though. You want to be envisioning your run, but you're staring at a flag. Okay, he likes what he sees. Griffin Paulson dropping in. Gets that front flip on the drop off again. Front yes! Front flip no hander. That's what we saw him. Do we no hander? The first one. 
clean double backflip, little bit of a turn there. Let's hope he's got the speed. Pulls in the flip whip. Whoa. Oh! Oh, luckily he slides out smooth. Ah, but the wheel's coming off the machine there on the 360 double whip. Oh, that was gonna be a good one. Yeah, Griffin was on a roll there. He got that. That did throw me off there. I did not, when we saw that in the first one, when he did that little flinch, we were thinking bar spin, but suicide, no-handed flip. I just flip. realized that we get to watch that again, and I'm so fired up about it. I knew he was doing that in practice, and we saw him pinch with his knees on the front flip in run number one. His extension was absolutely massive. Does he have a front? He doesn't have a front break there. You know, the weird thing is when you do a front flip, Suey no-hander, your bars spins. I'm trying to figure out how he kept that from happening. Some magician moves out there from Griffin Paulson. Here we go, replay here, fronty suicide. He just watches the bars and if they start to wiggle, he's going to grab them. Yeah, they did start to move just a little bit. As he's coming around, that's going to change the gyroscopic rotation of the front wheel and the bars do want to spin, but he grabs on just in time. That's some wizardry right there. I think they probably spin after you get past the halfway point. You just get his hands back on before that has a chance to take place. Going long on this double flip step down, squirreling out the G out. Yeah, he was able to get around a little bit nose heavy. And then right here, knowing that he did not have the distance he needed, decides to pull the ripcord. I think it started with landing low on the double flip, kind of losing some speed as the tires broke loose as he was really compressing in the G out. And I think that was a bit of a chain reaction. Put him a little bit off. Having to dismount the bike there on that 360 double tail attempt on the second hit. Right on, good stuff, Griff. Hopefully see him at Joyride on home turf there. The Canadian. What are you gonna do? All right. So next. Yeah, Nikolai, it sounds like you're as fired up about that front flip suey as I am. Oh, I am absolutely still in awe about that front flip suey. I'm pretty sure that's the first time we've ever seen that move in competition. This trick is, like was Cam was saying, it seems impossible with no front brake. I just do not understand how he keeps that level of extension. And I even talked to Griff before, and he said he had a front flip suicide to bar spin ready, but he was just gonna go for a big extension, and oh, it was a <laughs> massive extension. So big up to Griff for that. I agree, it was so perfect. I'm glad Nikolai was in the same boat with me, going like, how is that possible? Because you know, some of these tricks, people try them and go, oh, that's an issue with that trick. Okay, cool, you, you need a front brake for that. And then it takes, you know, some, uh, Somebody who thinks outside the box just figure out a way to make it work. And uh, looking forward to seeing that one again, maybe a joyride from Griffin. But the beginning of the show, Anton Linder, the youngster, 18 years of age out of Sweden, kicked things off. We saw him not finish his run, crashing on the last jump. He's dropping in mid-pack here, so he's actually you know, sitting better than we would have thought after his first run. Yeah, gets that invert three on the drop in. Whoa! Big flip, tuck no hander to Can Can. Amplitude through the roof on that one. Oh, and he transfers quite wide there. Let's see if he can get back on line with the flip whip. Ooh, come on. Slips his pedals. Ah. Oh, and not able to maintain. I was just going to comment on how clean that run was, and it was almost like just me thinking it. Jinx him. I'm going to, our desk is wood. I'm going to just continue knocking on that. Okay, so let's go back to that first dirt hit. How, bi how big is that jump? It's like 30 foot maybe 15 foot tall lip. When he popped off that lip, it looked like he was on a six foot tall street spine, how hard he pulled back and went to the moon. He took all of his speed up and I thought that was going to result in an under rotation, but he snuck in the variation and still got under the bike in order to finish it. But he was catching pedals so early and I was thinking, oh boy, this kid is on it. I don't know why that front foot slipped off, but he caught early. He put his eyes on the landing as soon as he could, squared his shoulders up to it. Spike your pedals. Yeah, I don't know. I think the future is bright for this kid. The, uh, the depth of talent coming out of Sweden, we're, we're not going to 
see this slowing down anytime soon. So we hope to see him back at some point. Anton Linder made it into today's event from the alternate list as we had riders crashing out in practice. Linder sitting in the top 10 right now. Going to have to go with that run one score of a 44. That's definitely not a score that represents his capabilities. So we'll see what the future holds for the youngster out of Sweden. The silver lining is you just got a top 10 in your first ever crankwork slope. Well, not quite yet. We'll see what happens. Sitting in a top 10, but some big names here to come. The next rider will be David Godziak. Yeah, guys, so David is a very private guy between his runs, before his runs, almost hiding, getting in the zone. With the tricks he does, it's no surprise, you know? He needs to get in this crazy mental state, and he's been hiding basically between the runs, haven't seen him, and now he's up at the start, and he's ready for a crazy run. He might be the only one left that can truly dethrone Emil right now, so let's get ready, guys. Oh, I couldn't agree more. This is the guy who has what it takes and that's just not an opinion that we happen to share. He started the season, we've had two events, and he's been on the second step of the podium at both of those, just ready to clean up a win. He knows what this opportunity represents. He wants to knock Emil Johansson off that top spot. He wants to put the pressure on, make Emil have to do a second run. It all comes down to this for David Godziak. Crashing out on that Castrol tail up on the final jump in a run that was looking so good in run number one. It all comes down to this for David. So he's going to wait for his perfect wi weather window, keeping an eye on that windsock. Here we go. David Godziak, can he dethrone Emil Johansson? He's on course. And he flip bars in and gets that tuck no handed twister. That's a tuck no handed corked out 1080. Nice big 360 can can tire grab. Come on. Triple tail whip on the first hip. Come on. Cat yes. roll bar spin on the second hip. Tuck no handed three up. Tuck no handed three out. He's looking good. Here we go. He needs this. Going for the cashy whip. He stomps and it. Absolutely stomps it clean. <laughs> wow, huge moment. Even a flare <laughs> invert on that final quarter pipe, racking up as oh. many points as he can. Oh, what are they going to do with this? <laughs> oh, judges, get to work. <laughs> and what you're seeing come out right here has been building up since Cans where he was so close to pulling off that second run like he does here today. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, okay, we just get to sit back, relax, enjoy the show. What is this score going to be? <laughs> oh, just to give context here, what we have seen nonstop for season after season is Emil Johansson winning with his first run. David Godzak has been climbing, climbing to second place after second place. But he has yet to knock Emil out of that spot and put the pressure on. Did he just do it? What do you think, Alan? I didn't see anything wrong here. Absolute <laughs> maximum extension, maximum height thrown in the style there for the boys. He even gets the subtleties, you know, like making that look good. A photo of that would, would, you know, belong in a magazine. So he's checking all the boxes of some of the craziest huck tricks, some of the stylish tricks, and then finishing with the banger. This was a cashy bar here on the hip. Yeah, that second hip, that cash roll bar spin coming around, spotting the landing. Bringing it in, just clearing the knuckle, absolutely perfect. A game of inches, maybe even millimeters. I mean, he put his tires exactly where they needed to be. And I kept feeling like he was going to be thrown away. I go, oh no, he's under-rotated, but he still was so high in the air. He popped so hard. It was perfect. Nikolai, this last trick, you know it well. Talk to me about it. 
Paul, I am so proud of David for pulling the last move there. You guys have no idea how much concentration and skill it takes to get back to that last jump after crashing on the last jump in the first run, especially with all the tricks that David's packing in the run. So he has to stay mentally composed to get there and then pull. Oh, look at the landing. It's money. Honestly, so impressive from David. So much pressure in that moment to make the run happen. And it was pretty much flawless. And look at this. I don't know if we've seen that one before. A flare in tape. And he's just screaming. Wow. Unreal was... moments from David. <laughs> Let's see the score. Let's see the score is right. You heard Nikolai say it. It was spotless. It, we just got to watch it over again. It was perfect. Rob, I got to hear from David. OK, well, incredible, David. You just lit this hillside up here. That's the run you've been looking for, right? Yeah, it was almost what I wanted to land. I'm super stoked to be here on the bottom. And thank you, everyone, for cheering for me. I'm super stoked. Is it going to be good enough to take the lead? Where's the score? Is it coming? Is it? <laughs> Let's see what you got, mate. It was incredible to see that. 60.75, second score coming in. Oh! No leader! Oh! There we go. We got a new leader in Innsbruck. Yes! No! Oh. Look at the score moment right there. David Godziek knocks Emil Johansson out of the top spot, puts the pressure on. We have one rider left to go. His name is Emil Johansson. Emil Johansson is in second place. This is what we've been waiting for. The score to beat a 95.25. Wow. <laughs> oh. David on that run. Amazing, amazing run from top to bottom. You know, we saw so many people fighting the conditions, and we could see some, some people laying up, making some, some downplaying a few things here and there, but not on David's run from top to bottom was everything that he came here to do. This is crazy. This is crazy. You know, we, we, we had a feeling that this moment would come eventually. You know, is, is it going to be Bringer? Is it going to be Godzik? And after the first two results this season, it's like, oh man, if he keeps this up, he's going to put the pressure on him. Nikolai, what's the vibe like down there? This is crazy. Uh, the vibe up here with the riders is commotion. You know, that run was just unreal. The pressure before, stomping it, waiting for the score. We knew that the score had a chance to beat Emil, but I think everyone up here was kind of even like, whoa, 95? Like, that's a big score. So the judges clearly loved what they saw from David, the execution, the risk, and they rewarded him big. And he's sitting in the top spot for, uh, for the time being. So 95, like we're saying, that's a big score. That's a great point. Thank you for that, Nikolai. Nikolai brings up a great point there. It's, it's not like they gave him a, a one point advantage. He's up there, man. The gap between 92.5 and 95.25 is substantial. But it's something that Emil Johansson is more than qualified to be able to pull up. For the first time, he's going to have to dig for it now. What are they saying in the chat? I got to take a look at this right here. Wow, it is blowing up. Yeah, we love it just as much as you all do. It's hard to even read these because people are loving it so much. A lot of really, a lot of enthusiasm for David Godziak here and a lot of anticipation for the run we're about to see from Emil Johansson. Cool to see Godziak out there, giving Somebody the fans says, what they want, signing Somebody some says, autographs. They're almost crying. This is such an amazing moment. <laughs> a late addition to this event. Another rider having a couple little mistakes in that first run. He's got room to improve on that 64.75. Wind looks good for Felix. Dropping in. So Felix in that tire tap. Make the most of his second Crankworks appearance here. See if he can ride this wave of energy. Flip Barsman on the big dirt to dirt double. 
coming into this blind step down. Big floaty three. So yeah, he's just gonna get himself to the bottom here. Soak it all in, smell the flowers on the way down the track. You never know how many of these events you get to do. It's having fun all the way to the bottom. Yeah, double fist pump. So Felix woke up this morning thinking he was going to be watching this competition. He made it in off the alternate list. Makes it out of this one clean. And as it sits right now, he would be holding on to his best position, who's 12th in Rotorua. We've got Max Fredrickson, Torquato Tessa, and Lucas Hooper. Lucas still holding on to a podium spot, which would be his best crankwork slope style finish. So the next rider to drop is going to be Max Fredrickson. Max currently... Looks like Max is already... Now he's warming up. Yeah, we saw Max in a bit of a boxing match with the course and the conditions on that first run, fighting his way all the way down the course. We know he's got more he can add to that score, currently sitting in seventh place. So Max sitting in seventh, banked a couple podiums to finish off last season. He kept the train rolling last run despite some mistakes. Let's see if he can clean it up. There he gets, gets, that. gets the no hands off. We saw that was where the first mistake happened. There we go. Keeping it clean, flip bar to bar, tuck no hander. Double truck on the step down. Downside triple tail whip on the first hit. Tuck no hander, looked like he's almost slipped his pedals, somehow able to keep his composure. Opposite 360 up into the whale tail. Ooh. Who's that, a 360 truck? Toboggan to truck. Oh, and it off there with the truck to whip. 360 barsman to tail whip. Well, definitely, I, mean, I shouldn't say definitely, but I feel like that was a better run than run number one. He did finish off run number one with that 360 quad bar spin, which was a last minute split decision, but he got all those variations that he had missed in run number one. Yeah, right off the bat, he got the tuck no hander coming in and some unique riding there. I saw, I think it was a, a 360 toboggan to bar spin yeah. on the step down. So really cool to see some unique things that we don't usually see out here. Really, really awesome run there for Max Fredrickson. Everybody pumped for Godziak as they pass by. And here we are on the step down. 360 bar spin catch, bar spin for the double truck driver. Landing right at the top of the lane and getting max pump, which will give Max <laughs> the speed he needs to be confident for this triple downside tail up on hip number one. What I remember him saying is a lot of people put crank tighteners on so their cranks don't spin while they're doing tail ups. I remember him saying, no, I don't use crank tighteners. If your crank spin, you're doing something wrong. You need to learn how to tail it. <laughs> yeah, very. A uh, very precise approach from this rider. He needs an 85 to get back onto that podium. He had two thirds to finish off the 2022 season down there in the Southern Hemisphere. Both of those stops. He doesn't have a podium yet this season. Such an amazing shot with that opposite spinning 360 up into the whale tail over the city of Innsbruck. And this is where things got unique. Not something you usually see. Toboggan 360 resets and then spins the bars. And he really didn't phone that one in either. It was perfect. Yeah. He let every trick be savored before he started the next one. And then finishing it off with a 360 bar spin to tail whip. So many rotations happening at the same time with the bike, with the bars, with his bike and his body at the same time. 
So currently sitting in seventh is Max Fredrickson awaiting his second run score. There we go, an 82.12 moves him up by two spots. He's now sitting in fifth. Good stuff for Max. All these, these, the difference between fifth and seventh, it means so much when it comes down to the end of the year with the point structure and staying on tour. Only 14 riders invited to each four stops on this year's tour. So every one of these runs really shapes the future opportunities for all these riders. Next rider to drop knows that. He's been on tour for many, many years. His name's Torquato Testa. He hails from Italy. Torquato Testa with a great result, the last event in Australia, fifth place. So Torquato looking in a good, really good spot here in fourth place. It looks happy. like he's just gonna take it. He's happy with that first run. Possibly the conditions deteriorating a little bit, playing a role. You know, he was not that far behind third place, Lucas Hooper. Well, I but mean, you, you can't win the war if you're not in the battle. So Who is on the podium, him. that means? Yeah. All right. You were me, right. Give me my money. Did we bow? Yeah, it was 100 bucks, I'm pretty sure. Oh, OK, yeah. <laughs> no, we, 100 pesos. <laughs> Well, good stuff there from Torquato Testa, a fifth place in Australia, and now ramping it up a fourth place here in Innsbruck. And it's going to be interesting to see what Lucas Hooper does with this. It's a, it's a big moment for him. Before this result, his best crank work finish, he had three fifths, but now he's on the podium with this secure third place here in Innsbruck. What do you think? Safety runners, are you gonna try to climb back up? He left so much out there on run number one and it was still good enough for third. You know, amazing comeback from Lucas. Don't forget, he missed the last round with a shoulder injury just four weeks ago, a third degree separation. Anybody who's ever done shoulder. that, like you know how ridiculous it is that this guy just put down that. It looks like run. he might already be celebrating, so yeah. maybe this is gonna be a glory run. Yeah, he doesn't look focused. He looks like he's ready to Cheers the crowd. Seven and a half points behind Emil Johansson in second place right now. So <laughs> I think we might just be seeing some enjoyment out of him right here. He's like, you know what? I'll see you at Joyride. Look at that smile coming around the berm. It makes you wonder what Emil is doing right now, right? Like, probably not watching the course. Probably a whole lot of visualization. But we got to soak up this moment right here for Lucas Hooper. And I got to toot my own horn because that was my pick at the start. I knew he had it in him. He's been working on it for so many years. There's been events in the past where we're like, oh, dude, this guy's going to get on the podium. And here he's done it now for the first time. Congratulations. The Swiss rider there, Lucas Hooper, third place, locked up. It's cool, we've seen this a couple times now. You know riders who haven't hit the podium doing it. We saw Eistead do it in New Zealand. And look, Eistead knows what this feels like. He just felt it a couple months ago. Ooh, a little split, split screen tease there. Emil Johansson warming up. <laughs> yeah, so cool to see Lucas Hooper having it co all come together for him today, making his way onto the podium. Joining a, a prestigious club. Yeah, he's, get, he's got some momentum going into the right event, too. Just missing out on the podium last year in Joyride. Getting a little bit of a break, maybe a little bit of a refresh, a mental reset, healing from that injury and coming back and, and having his best finish yet. He offered me one of those Yerba Mates from his helmet. I got to take him up on that. El Tony Mate. Okay, back to business here. One rider left to go. Alan and I are kind of freaking out up here in the booth. I'm curious, Rob and Nikolai, are you guys as excited as we are? Goosebumps. I got goosebumps all over me. The atmosphere's down here is insane. Godziak has brought this hillside alive. Johansson, right, he's not in this position very often. What has he got to do to win this, to seal this today? He's got to put everything out there on the line. I mean, a 95 is a huge score. Emil is more than capable, and you just got to make it happen. But the craziest thing is I in the gate, Emil was smiling, you know? Was he? So he's ready for it. So get ready, guys. Emil's coming.
<laughs> All right, well, we'll see. There's a lot of pressure on. How does he deal with pressure? So much pressure. There's some records on the line as well. He's just so confident in his riding. He knows he can make it happen. He just has that confidence level unparalleled. That's how it does it. Let's see what happens. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Is right. We say we've been waiting for this moment, but you know who else has been waiting for this moment? Emil Johansson. He says, all right, bring it, guys. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Nikolai? Is it going to be Goddick? Is it going to be Bringer? When it happens, I'm ready. He's up at the top of the course, smiling now, awaiting this opportunity with open arms. Oh, this is, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, he's feeding off of this moment right now, using it to his advantage. Oh, I love the body language. This is the mindset you want your hero to be in with this opportunity. He sees a window. He wants to go. He is eager. Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I love this sport. Here we go. Emil Johansson dropping in. Start now with that foot jam. Flip X up in, so same as the first run so far. There we go, that 360 triple tail whip on that massive jump. And this is where he starts getting really creative with the opposite. Double bar that time. Double oh, whip that time. Stepping it up. <laughs> Brings that go. Oh, no, no, no. The pedal. How yes, did he yes, get yes. the front driver off? <laughs> what? And he does it. The opposite windshield wiper. Stop it. I'm jumping on my broken leg. This is insane. Wow. How did he get down that step down camp? Oh. Insane. He was absolutely ready to bring it, and that is just what he did. What was that? What was that? Did my brain glitch? <laughs> I thought he had slipped his pedal and it was he over. He did. I don't know how he made it off of the whale tail. Did he just, did he take off with one foot? I screamed. Oh no! I thought we were gonna be see him ejected flying off that thing yeah. in the middle of the lip and the landing. What was that magic trick? Oh, and then I go, okay, how's he gonna finish? The opposite which <laughs> Yeah. What? You knew he wasn't going to finish with the same trick that he used to win last year. He knew he no. had something up his sleeve. That's why he was so fired up at the top. He's like, all right, you guys ready for this? You dare me? <laughs> OK, dare me. Oh, don't back me into a corner. Oh, jeez. Okay. And everything was perfect. Full overextension on that backflip. X up off the flat drop. Yeah, he was in the zone from the very first moment. 360, <laughs> triple tap, just looking He's casual. Not like winding up off the lip and kind of out of control, just very casual <laughs> and doing everything he needs to do. <laughs> Look at that smile, man. Amazing. Yeah, this is an athlete, okay? This is a world-class athlete to rival any performances any sport has ever delivered. This guy's ridiculous. Yeah, and he started stepping it up on the way down from that first run. Did you see that? His both feet were off when he was in the middle of that inward table. He got an extra whip in there. He had an extra bar in on the previous jump before this one. Okay, we're gonna get to see Cork Sev opposite into the whale tail. Let's watch his feet. I don't know how he got his foot back on. Yeah, it looked like the rotation came around a little bit slower than he wanted to, but he spotted that landing and pulled the bike in right where it needed to I be. Th but I think then he decided watch here. to go regular here too. That's something to think about. He improvised. He thought his hard. foot is slipped. Oh man, regular truck. He put his foot back on right <laughs> about the moment where his front tire is about to go off the lip. He's on the last board and he gets his foot back on. Let's see if we can <laughs> see here. Foot's off. What? Foot's off. Foot's he off. He couldn't even pump. Front tire. Okay, now foot's on. And he makes a decision to go regular. He thinks, okay, regular truck. I can do that. That what? is unbelievable skill. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, this thing we're gonna see good. Watch how close his front tire is when he gets his. Yeah, he had maybe three boards left before he was about to go off the end. Okay, spinning his opposite direction, does the tail one way, stops it, backs it up the other way, complimenting a trick that he did earlier up in the run on the dirt to dirt step down. It's poetry, man. And watch his feet. Watch his feet on the pedals. It's a well-written run. You know, this is like composed. No. No jumbling of those pedals, no question.
with authority. These little bit baggier jeans are working for them. <laughs> Not like there's anything wrong with the skinny ones. They were working for 11 wins. Oh, the judges, what are you doing? What are you doing, judges? The score to beat a 95.25 held by David Godziak. The first rider since Emil started winning to put the pressure on, back him into a corner, and force him to perform like he just did. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. A lot of emotion coming out of him right there. The difference between watching him stomp a safety run and watching him stomp a dream run. Rob, Nikolai, what are you hearing? What are you seeing? Oh, man, I can't believe what I just saw. That was absolutely insane, Emil. On the brink of disaster there on the whale tail. What happened, mate? Uh, I don't know what to say, man. He's calm. Yeah, I was, I was going for it. I was... Yeah, leaving it all on the line and the uh, wind condition or wind conditions make it really difficult. So holding it together and pulling out two world first feels pretty good in this contest round, I gotta say. Amazing dude. Emil, today's win on the line. Triple crown on the line. Crankworks wins record on the line, bro. How do you stay so composed in the pressure? You're smiling at the top. Yeah, it was super good to see David land the run. I mean, he's been going for it for quite a while, and for him to bump me, it was exciting. I've, I've been waiting for it. So, well, are you ready for the score, bro? Totally, yeah. Let's see it. Slope style. I don't know what the highest score ever is, but that's got to be close. Jeez. <laughs> oh, man. Taking his claim for the third time, the Triple Crown Trophy. <laughs> and the season's not even over. Yeah. Oh, man. Everyone was wondering if he could handle the pressure. <laughs> he thrives on it. I think, I think people need to chill out. He goes, I will order pressure, and can you give me a little cup that I can just pour on and season to taste? Turns out he feeds off of it. <laughs> Two world firsts in one run. How long do you think he's been thinking about that run? Yeah, a long time. He just needed a reason to do it. <laughs> And David Gazia gave him the reason. Look at that podium right there. We got somebody with the bronze who's never been there. David Gazia going three silvers at all. Every single stop this year now. And Emil Johansson just doing what we expect him to do. But you know what? This has got to be the most important win out of all 12 of those. It all came down to that moment right there, staring at that final jump. He almost didn't make it there but able to pull off a magic trick and get his foot back on and get a combination off and have the wherewithal to then do this, as he commented, a world first. Opposite 360 with an opposite tail, kicks it back around, a tail up the other direction, which happens to be as natural, but that's negligible at this point. The fact of the matter is an opposite 360 windshield wiper yeah, we've never seen that before. Uh, Rob is with our champ. Rob, take it away. Well, absolutely amazing scenes down here. You tripled the triple crown. You are the most successful Crankwork Slopestyle rider of all time. That must feel pretty good, ML. It's fun to run bags, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, how long did you have that run plan? Because, you know, we don't often see you under that much pressure, but you reacted perfectly when you needed to. Uh, yeah, I had a backup plan and uh, kind of had a couple of things I wanted to pull out in the first run that didn't go to plan due to getting windblown. So to be able to put it all out, second run in windy conditions feels absolutely amazing. How do you handle the pressure between them runs? Because, you know, after Godzak went down, all eyes were on you and you had to react. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a great question, but uh, I don't really think I can give a fair, uh, fair answer on it more than just trying to stay calm, like getting nervous doesn't really help. So uh, I always try to keep that in mind, obviously, a nerve wracking situation nevertheless. So, um, yeah. Next up, Joyride, you're going to be defending the title there as well. Not far away now. Uh, yeah, totally. And if anyone to say this amazing crowd here, Emil. Yeah. Uh, thanks everyone for coming out, um, even though 
I'm just lost for words. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Let's hear it for Amelia Hanstein! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, yeah, what's the point in getting nervous? It's really easy to say, really hard to do. This is right up there with some of the most impressive things I've ever seen in sport. There it is, 12 slope style wins. The new record belongs to Emil Johansson. It's a, it's a big day for slope style, a big day for that man right there, and a day we'll be talking about for a long time. Final results sheet looks like this. Yeah, amazing, amazing day for Emil. It just shows you, you know, he's not just the best rider out here, but he also has the best game in the business. He is mentally strong. Makes you wonder, you know, some of those early in his career, uh, you know, struggles that he had with some of his health and, you know, things weren't going so good. It showed him how to have that mental edge and, and how to persevere. When we talk about type A, type B, type C athletes, he's really showing the ability to fight through adversity like he did in that final run. It's tough to understand the magnitude and the importance of once in a lifetime opportunities until you've faced a situation where you think you're never gonna be able to be in those situations again. And I do think you're right, the adversity he's been through in the past lets him fully be in the moment when they present themselves. What a show, a lot to digest here from the Thule Slope style Innsbruck. Stick around, we'll talk about about it in a minute. Dive into the world of Red Bull TV, your daily source for action sports, music, and entertainment. Download the Red Bull TV app for free and sign in to watch all of our content offline. Get the Red Bull TV app now. If you want to get to the top. You have to dig deep. Pull the dirt down, shovel the dirt over, pull some more dirt down. Bingo, bango, bongo. A story of dedication, teamwork, and friendship. Steps to the top. Now available on Red Bull TV. The smell of burning rubber. The sound of howling engines. The thrill of breathtaking battles. Unbelievable event. Ambitious and competitive as never seen before. The bigger, the better. Drift Masters European Championship 2023, July 8th, live on Red Bull TV. Back live here from beautiful Innsbruck, Austria, on a historic day. Emil Johansson cruising through the crowd strutting his stuff, showing off that triple crown trophy that has his name on there, not once, not twice, but three times, three in a row, triple crowns. And the Crankworks World Tour, you know, we have four stops in the case of this 2023 season. If you win three of the stops, you get the triple crown. And, and you know, what better way to do that than win the first three stops? We still have Joyride, the stage is set for that to be an insane close to this 2023 season. But we love what we're seeing right now. Alan, I think our favorite part is the fact that he's so happy for David Godziak, you know? And, and it made him do this run. Let's let's watch it again. Here's a meal with his winning run. Yeah, I mean, all these riders are competing against each other, but they're also hyping each other up. So the level of the competition is going to spread around. And the fact that Godziak put Emil in the position to have to do what he had to do, there's a respect for that. And it is really cool to see getting displayed out here today. This is where things really turned up. We start seeing opposites going back and forth on spins, on tail whips, on bar spins. And the amplitude. And notice where he's landing on the landings. Every single landing, he's spinning the right amount. He's landing where he needs to. And this is where he ran into some trouble and pulled some magic off. Coming in off that cork spin. He slipped his pedal and was able to get it on. 
about three boards of the whale tail before his front tire went off the end. And if he would have gone off the end without getting his front tire on, it would have been all over. Gosh, I mean, I already saw it happen in my head because I was expecting that to be the case. I thought he was falling off the whale tail. <laughs> well, it's going to be weird to watch that reaction because well, there's so many moments where we were surprised. So at some points by the trick that he did, at some point the fact that he was still on his bike. Yeah. I surprised myself by jumping up and down. I don't know what I was thinking there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. He said two worlds first in that run. We just saw that opposite 360 inward to double downside with. And then on the last jump, that 360, the opposite 360 windshield wiper. What other tricks do you think he has that he practices waiting for these moments that he doesn't show anybody? I got to believe, I got to believe the bag is deep and we are just starting to figure out what's in there. You know, I think when he said that he had that in mind, I'm kind of thinking he's had that in mind since we've been waiting to see him get in that position. So you got to think he's thinking on the next thing. That's how you stay on top, you know, always one step ahead. Buy your tickets now. I mean, whether you're, whether you're buying your ticket to join us live at Joyride or you're just clearing your calendar to make sure you tune into the broadcast for Joyride, I don't know what you're thinking if you don't. Like, <laughs> the stage is set for this to just be an, an incredible ongoing story. This David Godziak, Emil Johansson rivalry now building. Let's take a look back at the silver medal run here from David Godziak. Yeah, Godziak having an amazing run here. He had troubles on his first run, so he was coming back. Bar spin, bunny hop, backflip, bar spin off of about a 14 foot drop there. Straight into an off axis 1080 spin. Bars in his lap, hands spread completely wide. And then there, mixing it up, showing his versatility. Getting good speed, keeping it through the hips. We saw a lot of riders having trouble through here, but as you can see, he was absolutely perfect on this run. Got the tuck no hander perfectly. That's where we saw some troubles and he didn't quite have enough speed for this move in the first run, but not here, not in the second run. And that's what put that pressure on and bumped him up into the top spot. It's crazy the amount of bangers you need to put in a run in order to compete with Emil. You know, he's he's not only doing a 1080 in the run, he's doing it on the biggest jump and he's taking his hands off. You know, he's got a big trick at the bottom. It's a cash roll with a tail, not just a regular cash roll, but we're also seeing the influence that these riders like Godziak, Nikolai, and Bringer have on Emil and his trick choices as well. I was excited to see that opposite Cork 720. You know, we see Nikolai throwing in a lot of bar spin and tail variations with opposites of all those in a multitude of different combinations. But I like seeing him dig deep and go for that opposite Cork 720. Yeah, and it's, and, and you know, to Godziak's testament, he's got more in the bag. We saw some stuff he was trying in cans that he didn't do today. So it's interesting. I wonder if what would happen in Joyride if, you know, when they re-rack it, it's the other way around. Maybe it's Emil putting that pressure on. And that's when things just, that's when it just starts the level. For sure, we're in for a good show. It sounds like the podium's getting going right now, so let's check in. Luke Time for champagne, God, man. Hope me, hope he left some uh, <laughs> hoopy. Definitely left, stuff, left some hoop stains on this course today. <laughs> If he left his mark. So, he's so stoked. He's wanted this for so long, man. Yeah, he is hyped up. I'm sure it tastes really, really sweet. Being up there on the podium here. When you tear your AC joint in your shoulder in the middle of the season, the season's got a flash before your eyes, and those podium hopes have to seem threatened. But look at that, how quickly he came back. And Nice All came together today for him. Third place, Lucas Hooper. Let's go! He said after run number one, he said, "I want to, want to take something that's, I want to take something uh, hard metal home." I think that's what he said. Right? In second place, taking home the silver medal here at the Tool East Lone Star Innsbruck at Crankworx Innsbruck 2023. From Poland with a 95.25, make some noise for David Gorge! So Godziak back on the podium, back in that silver place position, but different. 
was he was in first before the last run of the competition. <laughs> and we know, like I was saying, we know he's got more in the bag. So if he can, if he can do a run like that first and then put the pressure on. Oh. You imagine, right? Go back and forth game of ping pong. Oh, bitte nochmal. Nach der Umarmung mit Hilfe nochmal. Wir haben so many great battles in the history of this sport. And, you know, entering into this, well, this season is kind of the, the God's yet and nil era. Without it's further ado. It's fun to watch it unfold. Can't wait to get Nikolai back out there, too. You know, the gold medal. 12 Grand Quirk Slope Style titles. 12. 12. The third trip is that real? <laughs> Amazing. He's like, can we have five stops per season? This is nice. I know Emil's usually pretty stone cold, and we talked about how he blocked out all the pressure, but I think you can see on his reaction now, it's all coming off, and he's really, really appreciating this win. Hard fought, hard earned. He's a Jedi. I've asked him so many times, like, oh, how does this win compare, blah, 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 you know? And it's just like, a lot of them are just another win, you know? And he sugarcoats it a bit. This one, I have a feeling he would have a different answer. I think this one means a lot. As good as a, a victory run here goes. too. Forgot about that. Yeah, as good as the victory, it's all good. As, as long as it's as good as a victory run feels, to have to fight for it all the way down to the last second means a whole lot more. Well earned. They're all well earned. This one is just so much more challenging. It's a medium sized check. <laughs> One way to take pressure off the final stop in Whistler, BC. Wrap the Triple Crown up in Innsbruck. Well, ridiculous day of historic competition out here at the Thule Slope Style Innsbruck. Lucas Hooper grabs his first podium. David Godziak in silver, putting the pressure on Emil Johansson, who triumphed, grabbing that gold medal. This would be a true statement. Emil Johansson is unstopped, but not unstoppable. David Godziak proved it could be done, but he'll have to wait until Joyride for another opportunity to try to pull it off again. I've been your host, Cam McCall, alongside Alan Cook. I got to thank you for joining us. I hope you're looking forward to Joyride in Whistler. But we're not done here from Innsbruck. Please join us for the Crankworks Innsbruck Pump Track Challenge coming up at 6.30 local time. We'll see you then.